Okay, I'm going to mute us.
Yeah, we got about 30 minutes. Yeah, she said she would. There's nothing they can do with it. The it is, uh, can't be brought up anywhere near code. Precast somewhere else. They have to. They got to go in there and clean out them culverts. Oh, right. Yeah, culverts. Yeah, yeah. Right. Almost there. Getting the bomb can in there. Uh -huh. We'll see what happens. All right. So it looks like we got six thirty on the clock now. Let's go ahead started so this is a notice of the budget workshop the city of council city of Lytle Texas will hold a budget workshop on Wednesday June 29th at 2022 at 6 30 at Lytle City Hall for the purpose of discussing the 2022-2023 budget but uh, before we get started just like we normally do we can all please raise United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Let's get this with you, but that's the meeting over overseas. We'll come back. Yep. It always feels a little bit better. All right. I'll do that. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got a few things, just kind of big, big picture, and then and we're going to have uh, both Lynette and Matt helping us out as we go through the budget discussion. Um, but just big picture, so you kind of have an idea. We're going to talk about the timeline, of uh, the reason why we're having the workshops, what are the things that we need to take into consideration. we we'll have an opportunity to uh, discuss a little bit about the department heads and some of the needs that they actually have on there. Then uh, as we go through the budget, we'll probably bring up some of the issues and some of the concerns that we, we want the council to be aware of as we start preparing ourselves, uh, what we need to do, uh, what we will be able to do and not be able to do. So you kind of get an idea. But the main the main purpose out of this is big picture, have an idea of where we're at, what's going on, and what do we need to plan for, because there is things that we need to take care of within a certain period of time. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump right into the first one and the tax rate. Matt, did you want to go ahead and talk about so it? I'll talk, so everyone should have a sheet that's got red and green on it. Um, I kind of heard Paul. Oh, sorry, I got one. I created that based off of this formula online. It is the 2022 tax and budget deadline for cities with populations of 30,000. Oh, 30,000. No, that's wrong. We're 30,000 or less. Um, well, I got that one. So. Um, all my dates are correct. Red is the, if our rate is going to exceed that voter approval rate. I will tell you, we don't know what the rates are yet. July 25th is when the appraiser, uh, chief appraisers have to put out the certified values. And then our tax calculation worksheet will be completed then. That will then tell us what our uh, rates are, you know, what our rate is, is for no new revenue and then those voter approval rates kind of thing. From everything I can tell you that I've ever heard, and of course talk about previous years, you never want to exceed the voter approval rate, because that gives the voter the ability to then um, force an election and then if they pass, it goes back to this rollback rate, which is just can be bad all the way around. But I'll tell you, as the city grows, we've got to do something to get the money in to do what we need to do. So if we stay on the red side first, some of the key dates, is uh, July 22nd would be the last day we have to file a proposed budget. That's just something that Lynette and I can work on after the next couple meetings. Once we know what everybody's looking for, what we think we can accomplish with service of obligation and everything. And it's just that. It's just a proposed budget that we present before council is, and that's it. Council says, thank you, kind of thing. Uh, we talked about the 25th being the uh, certified values come in. Um, August 7th, we have to submit the no new revenue and voter approval rates. August 11th would be our last day to publish the notice of the budget hearing. And then August 15th, council should hold a recorded vote uh, on approving a proposed tax rate. 
August 9th, that was before that, I'm sorry, we've got to begin the notices for the tax rate hearing. Uh, August 15th is the last day to publish that notice, the 21st, last day for a hearing on it. On the 22nd of August, the city should adopt the actual budget if we're staying above that voter approval rate. Uh, we must also hold the tax rate hearing and adopt a tax rate exceeding that voter approval rate. And then the 22nd is we must order the automatic election to approve the tax rate no later than the 78th day before November. It's a lot of jargon that came out of this form, okay? That speeds everything up for us. If we think we're going to have to go above that voter approval, we got to start working now and keep the ball rolling fast. If we don't think we're going to have to exceed that, we've got more time. So we can wait until July 25th, we get that certified value in. August 7th, we get that uh, those rates from the calcula uh, tax calculation worksheet. That's when we can really start calculating what our revenues, at least on the type of taxes are going to be. We can start looking at that and say, okay, realistically, what can we afford and go from there? Uh, the, August 29th is the last day to file the proposed budget. September 18th would be the last day to publish the notice of a budget hearing. September 22nd is when we've got to hold that recorded vote with the council. Uh, that would also be when we begin the notices for the tax rate to the, for a public hearing. September 24th is the last day to publish the notice of a tax rate hearing. Uh, if the proposed tax rate will exceed that no new revenue rate. September 28th is the last day for a hearing or budget. September 29th is when we would adopt the budget and also hold that uh, tax rate hearing. I just want to make sure that we all know these dates. It may not be when they fall on council meetings. They may move here and there. But those are kind of the, the timeline we're held to. we got to do things by those dates, if that makes sense. That so even sense. if we're not going to raise the tax rate, we still need to hold a tax rate hearing? We have to have the hearing to adopt our tax rate, no matter what. Okay. So we just say, we know what it is, it's going to work for us, so we adopt it. I would have, in years past, and it would be my assumption, so we'll get a tax rate, we're at 0.3905, I believe now. Uh, they will take our note, our revenues, our current uh, evaluations, and say, to bring the same exact amount of money as you did last year, your tax rate will be this, which will be lower than what we are currently. Then we have the ability, there's a gap between what they say our no new revenue rate will be and what our voter approval rate is. That's the gap we can kind of move up and down in. Typically, we've always gone right up to that edge and say that's going to be. So it would be a higher rate, so we'd have to have a hearing. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't have one that's no, we just went with based on the adjustments uh, on the appraisal. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, you'll find out today as we go through this, the, the numbers, the numbers reflect something differently. So we definitely need to pay very close attention in the sense of our overall numbers. So in talking about, I'm just talking about revenues and rates. We're talking about our tax rate. Something else we need to look at is our uh, utility rates. We are still extremely low compared to everyone else around us and the surveys off the TML website the cities are size. So we're going to have to look at probably increasing our utility rates as well. And coming up, we can give you some numbers on those. I think it's going to be across the board. We're going to, have to we can't take them to where they probably need to be because it'd be too hard on our consumers, our residents. But they got to go up no matter what. I've seen other cities, what other cities around us have done when they adopted, they adopted ordinance that for the next five years sets out the utility rates and says, this is what's going to do this year, this year. So that may be something we need to do because we have not raised and everything I found on our website since 2018 on some and 2019 on another. So we're, we we're behind the curve then, we're behind the curve now, we'll still be behind the curve. Um, I was here when. Uh, company did a they survey and we were so far behind there was no way we could hit it that bad i don't think we can wait for another survey i think we need to get one done to know but i think in this year's budget we're gonna have to increase those rates no matter what awesome awesome any questions on the timeline okay
So uh, at this point, we have an opportunity to go ahead and start going right into the budget. So Lynette, did you want to just go based on the insert on the, on the folder? Go ahead and cover. Or are we going to do each department? Mm -hmm. How? Can we let that and start copying for that? Okay. What are we going to do? We're going to wing this guy. This is my first, I mean, I'm used to doing budgets for like at the firehouse or a lot smaller and you get to eat. This is a budget, but we're going to work good. Which one do you want to do? You want to go through the one we, in there we talked about? Let's start with that one. The only one I want to do for the other one is we have comparisons to prior years. Okay. So if you go to the one that has kind of some gray blocks in it, that's what we're going to cover first. Got a couple inserts there. Yes, sir, that one. Um, so, in general fund, you'll see. The one that says budget report is the one I want you to use. <clears throat> oh, at the top, I see what you say, budget report at the top right. So, at memorial taxes, we think we're doing good. We probably won't get all the way up to that 767, but we're only missing about. 45.7, so we'll be close to that. Um, I'm trying to just touch on the big deals here. Hotel Milko tax is doing good, but that's, of course, money we can't just use everywhere. Franchise taxes, uh, we believe over. we're over, yeah. But so that's, we're going to have a surplus of probably about $40,000. But again, that's, that's money we can't just use however we want. That's dedicated funds. <clears throat> on the uh, franchise taxes, we think that was a number that was over-exaggerated. You can see basically we budgeted 170, we've only brought it 125 so far for the year. We've got three months left. We're going to see how that falls. I don't think we're going to get there. Uh, the city sales tax, we budgeted at 1.48. We're you know right in the I think we'll be there, but I don't think we're going to have the excess like. It's what's previously been stated here a lot. You know, it was previously stated numerous times that we got surplus. We're going to have surplus. We're going to have surplus there. Based on all the reports we're getting in archive, I don't think we're going to have that big surplus that we've constantly heard about to then use elsewhere. Um, Everything else is pretty normal here. Fines are probably fairly close. We're due. So the net catch me up here. I'm gonna go all the way down in the bottom half there on the just above where the grand totals are. If you have available from prior years, police officers out stuff like that. So available from prior years at fifty thousand, that's money that has not been moved over yet. We so always talk about it. Available from prior years are on carryovers from the prior audit on stuff that wasn't used. It doesn't mean that that's actual cash. It still has to come from somewhere. So that will actually come from your budget. I mean from your fund. From a fund from somewhere, so that fifty thousand, when you look at it, is still a number that has to come from somewhere. As in one of those bank accounts that I put there in front of you. So we're hoping that there is an overage somewhere, but we'll have to see where it goes because we've got overages and expenses already with things like fuel and things that just went up. Um, police officers allocation that's dedicated funds, so we don't get to spend that. Transfer from general obligation sixty thousand. Did we ever figure out where that was coming from? That was coming from the general fund. Okay, <clears throat> so we should be able to do that. Court security. So we found a couple, like the court security fund. We found some funds that are dedicated monies that typically a transfer would occur at the end of the year. Somebody, a person would determine how much that was, and instead of doing it monthly like it probably should have been done, they would just wait to the end of the year and one lump sum transferred over. Uh, we're going to try to correct that and because those are dedicated funds. When money comes in on a traffic fine, there's a court technology fund and a court security fund. A small portion of your fine are dedicated to those funds. So when it comes in monthly, we ought to transfer that amount to those two funds versus having it sitting in the general fund for us to maybe forget about or accidentally use. You know, just want to make sure we do that monthly. And then transfer from other funds, one hundred and seventy-four thousand. We're trying to figure out where that came from or where that money's coming from, because again, that that's money from the previous year or, or somewhere that we we've got out there. I know when we talked in building this budget, there was some CDs and stuff. We talked about closing and doing this. We'll have to go back and research those, 
meeting minutes and all that to determine exactly what accounts we need to close and move that money from there into the general fund for that 174. Um, now, that shows 3.7 million total revenue. Those aren't, that's not, it's not a realistic budget. That's not really what we're bringing in. We're closer, if you look over on the uh, fiscal activity, the third column over, we're realistically so far this year at 2.7 million. So, it's a lot of money we still, we budgeted to spend, we thought we had it coming in, but we don't. So we're gonna really work on this and try to fix some stuff here. Got a lot of work to still do, but. I think that uh, transfer from other funds was like CRF money. No, I've already So we've already got those. Yeah. We do still have another 362,000 that's coming in from the ARC money. That's our second payment, which should come in August. in August. Because that would last August, a year ago is when we got the first payment. So we're, we're good there, but that's gonna help on other areas. So we, I mean, we've got that budgeted. So, so we're some of these good. were actually the ones that our auditor uh, had identified as transferring or moving funds. So it's gonna work itself out, but. We'll figure it out. The new budget, our goal in the new budget is to be a realistic budget. Animal control, library aren't gonna be funds over here that general fund then sends money to support. Like everybody else, they're gonna fall under the general fund, which is where they're funded from anyway. Um, we will move municipal court out from underneath public safety. That way when we build a police department budget is a realistic budget on what police is. Municipal court. And we're going to be able to look and say, okay, that's realistically what their budget is. The chief will then know animal control library. They're going to know what their budget is and where they have to spend. And it's going to be their job as department heads to stay within the means of that. And if they've got some issues, they can come talk to you know, finance or me and we come before council, we need to do budget amendments. That would be our goal. Is once we set our budget, these are the known parameters, just like your household, we have to stay with them. Because we've got some big ticket items this year that we've got to spend money on. Um, but our numbers, just so everybody know, our numbers are going to look less in the future in the sense of how much revenue we're bringing in. Okay. There's a lot of, in looking at the budget, <clears throat> it is really weird. There's a lot of like moving of money almost between accounts. I say smoke and mirror, but it's kind of like that. Right? It's like you're moving this money to make it look better here and back over there and this over here and that. And it makes it really hard to follow and understand, which is probably some of the issues we're having with audits in the past. With them really set down and making a quicker audit of it. And any of the budgets I've ever built, like, they've never been this big, obviously, but money's still money. You don't keep stick over here, stick over there, then stick over here, then stick over there. Just move it as it's needed kind of thing. You only have so much revenues, and you only have so many expenses to meet those revenues. So. Um, we go to the second page. We hope that the audit, Lynette's going to talk with them. We think that will come in cheaper than what we spent the last year because we're going to have things fixed and it's going to get quicker audit this year. That's also double year. And that's, yeah, that's for two years. I'm sorry. That was two years worth of audits, too. Um, the remodel of city sign, if you go further down about halfway through the page for 51.6, that won't be in next year's budget because it's already done. And that was used out of the uh, bump up tax. So that's good. Nothing real big on that page there. I don't think right when that that we saw. Um, the transfer animal control for three hundred thousand that won't be. You won't see that next year's budget because they're going to fall under the general fund. We go to the next page that talks about uh, salaries here within City Hall. Um, we did two things. We did a three percent and a five percent. I would say you might, my hope would be do 5%. I'm just not sure that's going to be physically possible. I think we're going to have to look closer to the three, but we're going to see how numbers fall when they start to come in. But that's the two different numbers if we did a three and a 5%. Of course, there's the top three people in, in City Hall, uh, me, Lynette, and Paola, we're all salaried people, so we don't have the hours. So that's what we were looking at there on moving salaries to based on conversations we've heard in the past. That's 
California. What those maps? Can you tell us what those are? Uh, so for me, it would be 90, Lynette 70, and Taylor 50. That's very, very reasonable We're on the low side. Uh, one thing I'll comment, we did this one year before, when, and, and it's been some time. We instituted a 5% pay raise, but we, to help with the budget, we did not institute it until January 1st. So that's something council can do too. You're not required to do it effective. You know that, so you cut a, a quarter out of the year, but the people still get a 5% pay rate. So there are some options. Now, I don't know when we did that, but we did do it because we wanted to shave some off. Just something to, not that it matters, I just thought I'd bring that up. So we're gonna take some, some looks in there. Um, the new permit clerk's there. So we should be, I think once we get these positions all filled, we're streamlining some stuff here in City Hall. I think that's gonna be good for us and we're gonna be more efficient here in City Hall and have the personnel we need. And one stuff. thing I really wanted to show in there was this complete liability that is to the city. When we hire somebody, everybody just thinks of that salary. There's a whole lot more to that than just that salary. It comes out from us you know we pay insurance it's like a matching there's you know everything in there even the retirement matching which i took all that in consideration the only thing i didn't hear which was considered the overhead burden would be you know the workers comp and that kind of stuff but should still be a high little bit more percentage on to what it means to hire people it will be i've got everything on the work there's an increase to workers comp this year too so i've got insurance time we're going to talk over that Everything is an increase list this year, so we're trying to figure out how to do all this. Uh, next page over is community center expenses. Those all look good. The only thing we weren't sure about is we've got that 180,000 repairs and maintenance public library. She is there 180,000? That was for the roof, right? No, that's that's money that she would always say that it would come from, like, for the budget. This is an expense, though. It was something we... That was to run the library, I thought. Yeah, but that's what so This it is repairs and maintenance. I know, but that would, it, that's what she would call it, that it would come in and tell us the... To me, that, I mean, if you call it repairs and maintenance, that doesn't yeah. cover salaries. To me. So, so then, can you go in, in this offer, can you look up, we, we already used 6600 out of that, that code? Well, Repairs and maintenance for the library. Can you look up and see what examples we used in there? Yeah. Yeah. show post on the screen. Um, All right, so for the year, we had, that's what's been allocated to that account. That and that looks a lot like what parents and maintenance. Yeah. And it's streets, it's water, library. I'm going to buy supplies out of that. You know what? It's a top on insurance and workers' comp. Everything else is pretty much. I knew. I knew. I knew that it was. She always said that. No, we're all learning. So yeah, I know. The next budget will be this. So it appears mostly repairs and maintenance. I guess. It's not really going to a library. It's yeah, it's not a library. Yeah, it would, I mean, I would take everything to that 120 account if I was really, or, or really coding it. Because that's not really going to tell me what the library really costs if I do it like this. Because you have utilities yeah, and yeah. all that stuff. That yeah, comes so it had, you know, you don't really want to do that because that gives you a, a real skewed number. Okay, that's, I'm going to have to read. Uh, <clears throat> So I have a question. Maybe it's a labeling. If 6714 is repairs and maintenance, I notice it's community center expense. So maybe that should be repair and maintenance for community center instead of the public library. Which one? The one we're talking about, right? The one we're talking about. It's labeled public library, but maybe it's for the community center? 70 should be the community center. So when you look up here at these numbers right here, 70 is community center. So it's maybe it is community center. It has a little bit of library. But this is a library, I don't know. Yeah, a library repairs. Maybe the insurance and workers comp, the 
and I can't see that coming out of the community center. So we might we'll just we'll have to look at it and, re and reclass it where it needs to go. But do you have anything for one hundred eighty thousand that needs to be done? No, what was the roof? What were you telling me about the roof? The roof needs to be replaced. That's what I've already been told. And how much is that? Well, I got a quote from somebody for an. Because the one I had gotten it was a little bit high. I mean, could that have been what she's talking about? Because mm -hmm. I thought we talked about that was going to be in this coming year's budget, right? right? right. So that's something we had not even budgeted yet. Okay. All right. Keep going until we get to that. Okay. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, so the next page over. Salaries and wages. This is the police department budget here. So you can see this one's kind of comes. It's got your fire department contract in it. It's got the ambulance building, missile. It's got a lot of things in there that really isn't police department. But we think realistically, this is probably the, the better of all the items, right? It stays pretty well in order. Well, I've got onion here. Well, yeah. Well, no, I mean, there's it, it, it's not really giving a clear picture. Yeah. Break it out. Okay. We're going to break that out. But as far as how the, the numbers are moving in there, we think this is probably the clearest picture. And I, I would credit that a lot to the chief coming in and saying, hey, this isn't classified right. This is class And those fixes would be done because the chief would manage the budget pretty well. But I haven't, I just got my updates, you know, recently. Yeah. So I've had, you know, but this is something I've been doing for 20 years with clearing up stuff in there. And sometimes I just say, well, as long as I don't even care, just whatever. Just get me through the next budget year. I don't, you know. Well, it's, it's but gonna be we're hoping, <laughs> you know, we're hoping now that when we have an issue, we can get on it. Because like now, if I need a question answered, I'm able to get it answered and find the correct solution, or at least we both know the problem. You know, so that's going to be a big improvement to department heads. You know, and we're already seeing that. I'm really looking forward to a new budget that I can, you know. Really do like a real budget. Anyway, there we go. We have our department head meetings. I think every month the department head will get a new printout of where they are. That would be my goal. Here's your expenses and your line, you know, just that way you're, you're in charge of it. Uh, the next page is just the overall comp to the police department with both the three and five percent increases. One of the things we need to discuss here so, holiday pay. Everybody in the police department gets it with the exception of the chief. There's some dilemma back and forth, right? So Chief is a salaried employee. I don't remember the entire discussion. He can fix, he can correct me here in a minute. But if he works the holiday, he gets eight hours added to a holiday bank. Not I mean, really. I mean, not really. So what happened was years ago, I was eight hours vacation. Okay. I got eight hours vacation. If I worked a holiday. Now we're not talking about right now because now we well, we go through tots, but I'm talking about years ago when I didn't really have a lot of options. I mean, I fourth you a lot. I mean, I'm the farmer, I've got to work that stuff. That's okay. What happened was those were it was the other guys got paid, I got a vacation day. Well, when the budget, I mean it's on when the budget, when we got the new software, magically I was given a certain amount of money somehow or another, a certain amount of days was put in a holiday bank. And not in the vacation. So when the auditors looked for who had how much vacation we had, they saw the vacation. The holiday was like, you know, smoke over here. We didn't really talk about it. Now right now we're fine. It's just I've got a lot. I got about eleven weeks. I'm trying to burn up. So I'm, what is the holiday? It, it's I just basically if I work on a holiday, I get eight hours holiday. I get eight hours. I get eight hours was a vacation day, but now they call it a holiday day. Basically, it's comp time or it's flex time. But what happened is, for years, it built up because I didn't have the option to take it. So now we're starting to take it. So now so gonna, it's going to take me. It's going to take me a year or two to get it knocked down. So here's my question on it. We can do a couple of things. And this work council is going to have to. And we're going to meet with when we do the uh, policy deal. With their legal uh, lawyer up there with the new law firm. This may be something they want to address because the chief is the only salaried employee. That gets that. You've got other salaried employees that 
may not always have to work on a holiday, but for James, I know there's a lot of holidays where we've done events. Yeah. And he's shown up and he worked. He didn't get the extra eight hours of pay or an extra eight hours put into a bank. That's just something we're going to have to determine. Either there's no policy is if a salaried employee has to work on that holiday, we're going to pay them an extra eight hours of pay, or you're a salaried employee, flex it somewhere. I don't, whatever we decide to do, we need to know when we finish this policy manual because we're going to have to add into this holiday pay how we want to do it. Because with Chief, and it's great because we've got tenured employees, but at some point, it's a losing battle to the city. We're going to wind up in the same boat someday if he retires or leaves, where we've got to send a lot of money out. And it might happen right before you change the policy. That's my opinion. <laughs> but it's just a, we need to think realistically how we want to do this. I mean, and I'm not, this is not something that we scheme to create. Five weeks. Yeah, five weeks. You can make five weeks. No, it's not five weeks. 400. 400 hours. Sorry, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, and plus I have vacation too. But, so this is not something we scheme. It's something that came out of, you know, 15 years ago, we just had, it got created. So we're working right now. I've already taken probably three weeks, I think, out in the last, you know, um, so I'm trying to take a lot of But it. our problem is he's burning his holiday leave. Meanwhile, he's never touching vacation time. So that's going to max out. Then he's going to get all his vacation, and then we're right back. So here's no the deal. Circle. Here's the deal. If we're talking about this, basically... I'm not going to be able to take all my vacation this year. I'm going to focus on that. You know, we give me a year. You pay me out vacation this year. After, if I can't, I mean, there's no way I can take it all yeah. and haul it. Then after that, that's it. Then from then on out, I got to try to get in the cycle. But you're going to have to give me a little time because it took me a while to get in this boat. It wasn't for me. Yeah, I did it for the city. My goal isn't trying to say, hey, we need this mess all this up. My goal is just understanding what our total lot bill is. And we need to do we something to do about it. <coughs> it's just, and that's that's yeah. the reason why with the handbook we're going to go yeah. ahead and address it. And I know our attorneys have already given some suggestions of what to incorporate and to review, you know, and all that. Portion. And I'll schedule a date for us all to meet. But we'll yeah. definitely yeah, make right sure that. that we do something and it's consistent with all, all sure. Saturday employees sure. all the way across. Yeah, but now like I say, I'm just trying to work on getting, getting, getting back to a starting point. And you have been, you've been taking, we took what, 74 hours? I'm taking, I'm going to take it four days next week, but it's just, I'm off tomorrow, I'm off Friday, but I just, it's, again, I'm, you know, I, I was, I was really planning, I really thought Matt would transfer over in October, so I really kind of plan on taking a lot of time off, you know, and, and it, it's kind of come a little quicker, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm having to kind of adjust a little bit, but I'm still burning it, and, and you know, again, it's just, it's what happened, and it's, um, you know, I don't know, but we're, We'll get it figured out. Luke, Luke is enjoying it. Having yeah. it all I don't right, know if Luke. he likes that or not. Oh, I, I like you it. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the next page we flip over is Public Works, um, the street department, it looks like. Uh, we're going to work on their, I'm working currently with them on their uniforms. Um, they want to switch uniform shirts from that thick, heavy, hot shirt they're in. To a lighter, not James. James likes his shirt. It's white, but the guys wear a blue one, which is hot in the summertime. And they also want something with some reflective on it, better when they're working in the road. Great idea. They found they've identified the shirt, the cooler shirt. They want to ask the guy for numbers to make sure, obviously, he wouldn't like two hundred bucks more. He like, actually, I think y'all are gonna save money by going to cheaper shirt. And he quit calling me back. So I'm gonna get back on him and give me that part number because I'm sure he wants to stay in a higher price shirt. So. Um, reserve for drainage project. That was fifty thousand. Um, that's a big project. Remember they they've identified with TRC on like two phases. I'll get TRC to give us some new numbers. I'll get with Scott to give us some new numbers on what that project would cost. I don't believe in knowing numbers now that fifty thousand is a drop in the bucket to do much of anything over there. So we're gonna have to really look at how we do drainage stuff. Um, We've got another one, RFP out for a master drainage plan for uh, Lakeshore that I'm finishing up that we're going to issue. When that comes in, we're going to select the firm, but then there's a cost that goes with that. That's going to be a pretty high cost. So we've got to think about these things long range. Yeah. we got Ball Road, too. Another... Ball Road, we got several. And I've got a... Oh, there would be Easy Street. On where? Where is it be Easy Street? We're changing to... I think that was all part of. That's I think that was all part of this project. I, I believe I'll check with them. Is that who you? Yeah. So. It's not the 150 on the streets. If we're still mixed up. Yes, yeah, so the 150 on streets. Yeah. Street update. I talked to the contractor. They will be here the week after July 4th to start site work and kind of deal with any issues there. 
They anticipate to be out the week after that for actual paving. And uh, he believed it was in the contract. He's getting the contract to send me to get my daughter. Um, but even if it's not, he's going to feather the side of the road down. They will be done. So we won't have that big six inch drop off over there. So that money is going to come out. Um, everything else looks pretty good, and James, James is pretty good on his budget. I'll give you that. We do take trash collection there, and we are uh, doing very well in trash collection. Um, I know there's a conversation about maybe going up on prices as well. We're going to have, if we, whatever we do, I would anticipate there's going to be an increase in cost per car. Everything we've done is an increase. So if we stay with the current provider and maybe go for a one year extension or we do our whatever it is we do, it's going to be an increase. It's just one to update most of them again. You can send it out longer if you want. Okay. But we'll cross that bridge and get there. It's just a, it's something unfortunately we pass on to the to our, our users anyways. And there, there is always every annual waste management, as you're aware, every annual they'll review, they'll go ahead and do an increase. We can expect that to go up just because of fuel costs, the automatic one. Well, we're already seeing some issues, so y'all y'all realize, I mean, zero. Y'all notice we had some issues with trash picked up one day. Uh, we had an issue with getting a recycling bin picked up. Friday, ultimately, or whatever day it was, and ultimately again today. So they're having some driver shortage issues too. So we're trying to keep with them and keep it moving. So hopefully, because it's right at contract time, we're going to get some pretty good responses from them. We'll see. Uh, you'll see Wayne, I guess, is paid out of the street department for the parks guy, Wayne. He's paid out of the street. So that's his overall. That's a three and five percent there on him. Nothing astronomical there. Are we are we gonna keep that the same or are we gonna create its own well street from parks? That, that's, uh, parks already comes out of the F one hundred account under the general fund, so it should stay under the general fund unless you wanted to I think we can keep it under the I would love to have one that says parks and then we know what we're spending on parks. Both salary, in whatever it is we want to do in the park. That would I be think nice. Even then we're still going to have it's going to be a department within a department. Yeah. I'll know exactly how much is going into parks, how much is going to the library, how much is going to handle control. If there's the control factor just so going to be there. It's just all going to roll up under the general fund. Yeah, awesome. <clears throat> so Wayne will come out of streets and roll into the general fund. It's but I'll know exactly how much it is. Uh, the next is the library. We, uh, you can see there he comes. No, this, this is always going to look weird, right? Because they became a fund of the city, not under the general fund. So their income versus their expenses are way off, obviously, because we've got to transfer money from our general fund into their fund as an income to then cover their cost. So I think we're still doing pretty good there overall on the budget. We'll figure out what we have to actually transfer coming into the year to meet their budget. And hopefully it's not going to have to be the whole 170000 We'll see, but that's what we anticipate. That's why we were asking about the 180 before on the repairs and maintenance, because it's we were already transferring the 170 to cover the cost. Well, Cassie may be right. Because that looks like it's right on. It's going to be about 170, 180. Maybe so. probably right on that. Maybe that was 170 plus 10. It was under that audit expense account. Trying to figure out that. So the next page, uh, I'm going to tell you these next two: the library and animal control. We're going to have to make some really tough decisions when it comes to employees. Our new policy handbook, our current policy handbook, and when we have an employee that works on average 20 plus hours a week, that puts them over the 2,000 hours a year, we are supposed to, and it is the assumption of our retirement company that we use, that they are paying into the retirement plan, 5% of their pay, and the city's matching with 10%. Uh, and there's also on our medical insurance side that assumption as well that they're on medical. I think that's some of the stuff we're going to get when we go on the policy manual. So it would be my opinion, and Cassandra, if I'm right, you have two employees that are part time people? Yes. And they work on average 30 hours a week? Yes. And the only time they don't work 30 hours is if they take a day off or if it's a holiday because they don't get holiday pay. So tough decisions we're going to have to make. There's enough there between those two part-timers 
to make one full-time position, having three full-time people out there. We cannot, in this new budget, we are not going to be able to hire extra people. We're not going to be able to, we couldn't turn both those people into full-time people. We're going to have to make tough decisions on how we want to move forward. We cannot have part-time people that work more than 15 hours a week in the city without the extra added cost. We're, it's a benefit to us, but it's not a benefit to that person. We're almost using them. So we need to fix that. So that's something we got to decide. Maybe we can talk with Cassandra and see if how they want to work that out. Matt, you could also mention that, you know, those part-time employees, they're going to have, if they work that, the, if they grow that, they've got also paying the retirement, yes. which they're is 10, lose 5 they're going to lose 5% of their pay. Their pay. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have to match, we're going to have to double yes. that. And the insurance is, you know, $6,000 a year. I know they're not, don't blame the messenger. I'm just telling you what we should be doing. It's not what we've done in the past. So we'll have to have those tough conversations. Of course, we show the three to five percent increases there for that. Um, next page over is animal control. Again, the income same way. We got to transfer to make that all work out. So that's good. Um, we do have a discretion in the overtime pay. We got to work on that. We're already over budget, and with the next one, we're about a thousand over. So it's time for me to work with you on how yes. we can't have any more overtime in animal control. Period. Rest of the year, zero overtime. Unless we got to figure out right now what we're bringing a thousand dollars within your budget to fix that mm -hmm. because we can't steal that from somebody else's budget. And if you have any more, you got to figure out where we're going to take it. So that's something we're going to have to figure out on the employees over there. Um, I'm hoping there's enough wiggle room in his budget he can make it work. So next page over is uh, employees. You'll see that same deal we've got one part-time person out there that works on average 30 hours a week or 24, 24. 20. Yeah. got to figure out what we want to do there is that person willing to reduce to 15 i don't know or we just make it work with the full-time people i don't know we need to look at it and looking at again don't shoot the messenger I'm just giving you solid information what i see other cities do i look at other cities all the time and, and they don't have as many people working animal control as we do. Their expenses to animal control aren't near what ours are. We're doing more than most cities. I'll agree with you on that. So we need to figure out how to fix this and what we want to do to move forward. Maybe that part-time person just reduces down to 15 hours a week. But that's decisions we're going to have to make amongst council and working with our department head on how we want to move forward on that. Uh, next page, we'll get into the water fund. So, yes, sir. So, Santi, um, definitely wages, you know, taking a look at, and then the operating portion of it. I'm just looking at the numbers that we're getting from the from the operating side. Yes, yeah, I was looking so, at that too. So, we probably need to look into that too. But we did definitely need your help with the overtime right now. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk to the ladies. And so the number you're seeing there, Santi, is really not considered or, or consistent just today. I posted payroll, so we're about a thousand. Okay. Again, I know we're covering the current year's budget, and we're talking about next year's, but we need to give a true representation of where we are this year to understand where we need to be next year. Uh, next to the water department, um, we're going to see another bump in the ARC funds. We'll get that at 379-885, but after that. We're not getting any more free, say free, any more money from the federal government. So that money, for the most part, is already expanded. It's well money. We drill the well. So don't think we've got an extra 300 something in there we can just spend. So that money's already gone. Um, everything else there looks good. Fuel wise, our biggest key is going to be fuel. Fuel prices going up. Things are still good. But I know police department, y'all were. Already over. Well, right. we're running right now. Danny gave me the 30 days. We're running 100 bucks a day in fuel. So that's 30, 36. We're budgeted 15,000 for this year, 20,000. But we'll, we'll be at 30. And if we stay like it is, you know, I'm, I'm going to recommend 30,000, hoping, hoping it goes down. But right now we're 30 day average, $100 a day. I think took, a guy to, took a guy to jail today. You know, it cost, you know, tell him what it cost, you know, put 100 miles on the car, just get nowhere and back. 
How much is the Uber over there? Might be. Yeah. Might have been an option. Luke is actually going to start a business contract prisoner transport. Hey, I'm going to have a bike, though. Yeah, it's going to take so, you longer. But, so if, if you look at the streaming, I took out those CRFs that aren't funding. Water currently would only be bringing in 789000 with an expense of one one point one. So we definitely need to look into that. Now, some of our expenses, we might have some big things in there for, like, capital improvements to water system, 600000 We would hopefully have that next year. I'm, I'm moving that over oh, to 8.5. Okay. So that will be gone. Let me take that out. Okay. So there, if we take that out, then we look a little better. Okay. I think this kind of ties into what you said earlier, Matt, about taking a look at our utilities yeah. and how much we're charging we're gonna have to, you know, to be able to make make a gap. Yeah. Our water, our water is really low compared to, to everyone around August, to everyone around us. Actually, no, that's 700 and something, that's water well for. I've already expensed that. So that came out of the ARP fund, so that's kind of a wash. So, yeah. So we're positive maybe about 100,000 right now. So we're doing, we're doing okay. I mean, it's not the greatest, but. 799 to 403. Yeah. Um, next page over. So we've got two gray items there. It's a transfer to water reserve and a transfer to water acquisition fund. We're going to show you those funds here in a minute, how much you're sitting in there. Those monies have not been transferred this year, correct? So we'll see. But I, I wanted to know, back to base, what was the rules on that? Who, when, can anybody on the council tell me what was agreed to? Um, or is that just something she built the budget? Yeah. She built it in there. And it was well, just what do y'all Sam, if you can help me out with this. So, in previous in previous years, one of the things that we that we try to do is that we try to transfer funds to be able to do some of these water projects. So we would shift the money and and start depositing and, and building it up. The thing that helped us out is the ARP money that came through. So now we had another source of money to be able to take care of the water, of the, of the well project and stuff. So, so we have a bank account for sewer reserve fund and we have um, a water acquisition fund. There has been money put into it. I just don't know what the end of year agreement is or monthly agreement or, or what, what the council agreed for those funds to do. How just something at the end of the year. We approved the budget. This is we just in the budget we said we're going to transfer that much to them. Does so, anybody yeah. remember a conversation? Oh, I don't think I think oh, it was just numbers in a budget that she presented that was presented to the council and we approved it. Um we hope to be able to transfer all that. We'll see where the end numbers yeah. stop was, at the end of the year. I, I still feel there was some sort of hey, we have some money available and let's put it aside and we can use it when we do this project. That's how I remember it. You know, that's one of the things. So the last so time, sorry. the impact fee. I'm sorry, Matt. The impact fee. Of course, those have to go on that very last line item there on on 600. But the other two, I'm not exactly sure what the agreement is and what needs to go or what has to go into the bank account. And these funds, anything that's a dedicated fund, we're going to transfer those monthly. Versus wait until the end of the year to determine what that number should be. Hopefully, we didn't miss anything and transfer it one lump sum. If we transfer it monthly, it's easier for us to be able And that's money we're taking in anyway that's dedicated money that's in it when we're supposed to. Um, again, the two employees out of there are James and Robbie or Robert. You can see what theirs are. Three and five. Next page over is the gas. I think the gas fund has always been our best fund, right? Mm -hmm. so, so we're in 340 and 364, yeah. we've got 20,000 in that. Um, and that's with transfer, and there's a transfer for future outages of 14,850 uh, overall. I, I took that out. The transfer for future outage? It's like capital outlay out. Oh, okay, capital outlay out. And this is, this was another account that we used to take and move money over right. to build up. We're, we're going to show you. We've got that. We know Sorry. it is. We know what that goes to. So we have 125000 in that bank account right now. So where is this? 
I just need to know the agreement. What what we need to do with that. We do it. We do a line test every five years, right? James, every five years we test the gas lines. Seven. Seven, seven years. Seven, yes. And there was a. I know there's a cost, and I believe the fourteen eight fifty was the yearly we transfer over, so we got to that total amount in seven years, or what we anticipated would be. So that's what it is. It's just fourteen eight fifty is a yearly amount we transfer. All right, next page is the two employees. That's Pete and Grant come out of there. Same thing, the 35% on them. The sewer fund. You can see the total revenue was 377. Total expenses so far this year is 192. We're budgeted to spend 288.9. But if there's anything major in that, I don't see anything there. You'll see the transfer to reserve and then that impact fund. We'll see what those actually like the impact what we were actually paid in because if it was less than that it'll be less of a transfer but more than that it'd be more of a transfer so those are dedicated funds as of right now our impact fees for sewer are 36,249 so based on that i think we will be under on the 52. and the two employees there are juan and chris now the good quasi good thing here with james Juan works typically close to 40 hours a week, correct? He works full-time hours, but he is a part-time permit. It was weird how it was labeled. So he is not paying into retirement. And he does not have medical benefits. He would be the one employee that I say, if we're going to assume that or take that liability on, we do it for him. We get James the person he needs because it's not as big of a cost to the city. He would be the one employee if we're going to do it. It would be that employee there because he's already at the 40 hours a week. Any questions on the brief snapshot of current where we set? I just had a question, it just, it just popped in. I was looking at the audit expense for each account. So for water, it's 6000 For uh, So it should be gas. allocated out. So that 30000 that we filled this year, it should have been broken out piece by piece. So I have to go in and refund it. Okay. So we would take a little from each yeah, person to cover the total cost over here, right? Well, you would break it out, but you yeah. fund, yeah. Percentage of the company total. So our total thirty thousand we paid was a little from each one of these accounts that covered that third. But it's only it's only on those utilities because that's what they're going to be looking at, right? right? Yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't go into the departments. No. So six, seven, eight, and then one twenty is the way it would break it. I mean one one hundred not cash. I mean, they're still looking at library, though. They're still looking here, so it may be a little bit of each. They I just to. noticed it right now. It just popped up. No, so. that's, it has to, there's still stuff in here that I have to reclass and I have to fix. Uh, I haven't been able to do everything that I needed to prior to this. Okay. So if one will cover kind of hard cash we have in the bank is the next year, just a couple pages. It says, uh, I became, how you printed it. Mine came through as an email that I got printed, so I don't know if it says, there you go. Yeah, it would have been an email. Well, there you go, perfect. Okay. So. Okay, so full cash, 1.5. Million now. I will tell you there's some money coming out of that that we still have to do a transfer. There is a dedicated fund that we get money from Bear County every month, correct? Which one? The the school crossing guard fund. We get that. So monthly we get a check from the Bear County tax assessor. When you renew your registration in Bear County, a small portion of that is to a dedicated fund that is for uh, school safety, school crossing guards, stuff for the kids, that kind of drug prevention. Um, that money has not been transferred as it's supposed to. It's just made into our general fund and sent there. So we're going to go back for last fiscal year 
and up to our current year, transfer that over, it's six, seven thousand. It's not a whole lot, but it's something. And then that's money that we can work with the school and give it to them for paying their school crossing guard or security upgrade or whatever. That's what it's designed for. That's the intent of it. That's the state law on it. Going back the other years and trying to come up with that, we'll figure that out later. We can't take that kind of hit, unfortunately. Then we have, there was some more money that had to come out of that one for the hotel motel tax. Hotel yeah, hotel motel tax. That was something that instead of every month when they paid their tax to the city and thus taking that and putting it directly into the hotel motel tax account, it came into general fund and come into the year, we would determine how much it was. Hopefully we'd mess it up and then one lump sum over. So we're going to change a lot of this. Thing. So that number comes down, obviously, some. Impact fees? Yeah, okay. all of our impact fees, again, any dedicated fund, unfortunately, which is end of the year, a lump sum transfer over. We're, we're going to fix all that. So that's where a lot of that's going to come from, is out of full cash. Um, Payroll accounts, 57, or, you know, five, that's not, that's something we just transfer to cover that every month. Uh, four for the chief on this police officer, that's that uh, dedicated Leo's money that comes in from the state that can only be used for police officer training and equipment, correct, Chief? No, just training just, for full-time officers. Just training for full-time officers. We get uh, about, a, we get about, a, now that has been kept correctly because I have to, I, I, I got that, that correct, corrected years ago because it has to be. Uh, they all they can order this comp for, but that's about a thousand eight hundred to twelve hundred bucks a year if it comes in, uh, and we we have a handle on that right now. It's up to date. Um, impact fee. Which one's that one for? That's the one with thirty six thousand in. Uh, she combines them, so she combines sewer, or it is a combined account of sewer and water. Okay, so that's your sewer and water. So you can see that is obviously. Well, from probably where it should be. Um, so our water impact fees for the year were fifty nine thousand, which I will have to transfer out of full cash. And our sewer impact fees are thirty six thousand. So there's a good hundred. And those are fees. Those impact fees are something we had to produce for Samco on this serious obligation. They needed to see these numbers. So we really work on that a lot. Uh, wastewater impact, you'll see what that is. That's probably fairly accurate. Um, no. Oh, is that one off too? That's the one I have to transfer to 36. Oh, that's the 36. Yeah, I broke that one. So, funds. Christmas decoration fund of 573000 We need to look at some of these funds, figure out which ones we want to just close and put back in general fund money, I mean, I don't think we need to have an account or a fund. When I first started, uh, one of the first meetings I went to, uh, the council decided to close that and put it back in the general fund. It was like a January, February. I remember that conversation. So that needs to be closed now. Some of these funds, we'll tell you, there we can't close, right? But a lot of these, we need to consolidate some of these just mysterious savings accounts that we just throw money into just because. We, we need everything we can get right now. Um, court security fund, that's, again, that's another one we're going to have to go through, figure out money and figure out where that one needs to be. It's a dedicated fund. Court technology fund is your next one. Again, they, those come from your funds. Uh, we have an in, infrastructure account that has 23000 in it. Other than it was just something, I guess we put money in. Uh, ball field lighting reserve account, that's got $8,200 in it. I understand what that's for. Um, I'm just not sure. Um, realistically, ball field lighting over there is going to cost a lot of money to do. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's not something that we're going to do in the next probably year or two, realistically, unless we do another certificate obligation that gets going in on it. So that's money we need to see. If, I don't know if some of that came from a donation from somebody or if that's just money we saved. That was okay. a donation. I would, so, I would, I would recommend, of course, we can't take the action. Yeah. But I would recommend just leave that one the way it is, because there, there was, there was folks that reached out and got money, and we need to make sure we keep it safe. I, I think. Well, 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 look. I think I know where the HB money is. Um, sewer reserve fund. We've got one hundred fifty thousand in there. That's good because we're going to probably be using that in the next couple of years when we start sewer plant expansion stuff. Um, C 
Do you have oil fund? Slowly, so they have oil fund. And I, I'm not I, why. I just need to find out why it was set up or if I can close it and put that back into full cash. So uh, storage tank, I'm assuming that is the groundwater storage tanks we have a fund for. Our savings account's got 4700 bucks in it. I don't Community center account. Again, these are accounts that we, these are not CDs that people have set up for these projects. It's a fund that got opened, we believe, along the way. So there's some money there, um, 7,400 bucks. So we're in the promotion account. Is that a, is that community center account? Is that the one where we track the money that we bring in from renting it out or? I've never seen so, a transfer done, sir. We would rent it out in a long time. We're gonna talk about, I got some plans for yeah. When you get our community center, I'm just thinking, money. I'm just thinking based on the, the name of the account, whether or not it was used for that as money came in. Sometimes what would happen from setting in all these meetings is there would be a little money left and they would just, somebody would say, well, let's throw in an account to do this. And I've literally seen that happen dozens of times, Matt probably too. They would just come up with an idea of here's a little extra money. Let's put it over there for that. Yes, sir. Jim. Could that uh, money on that uh, storage tank, could that be insurance? Insurance on the roof. Uh, we can look and see when it came oh, in and know. Oh yes, that's about right. This is when the, the the first, storm when it first got yeah. damaged, and we got money from the insurance. That's the only thing I think of. No, you're correct. It was around that, that amount. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. so there was a deposit made in 2014 on that account, on that uh, th our, uh, community center account, okay. and it oh, has been it has been interest earned since 2014 that brought it up to where. A lot of these accounts we're talking here now haven't been touched in new numerous years. We can get your breakdown on when the last time money money went into it other than just saying, you know, something from interest. Um tourism so promotion account, that's that hot motel tax. Uh disaster relief fund. Not sure that's two thousand dollars, not sure where that came from, what it's for. When was that last time? Yes, and I'm that was opened in uh, 9 30 24 2014. Uh, $2,062 was put in. The only thing that has happened is interest to date. And that's why you're at 2014. I think that was donated money when we were having hurricanes and stuff. I think we that's why that fund was started. Because we used to do, we'd plan on doing stuff. Remember, Matt, we, we housed people, we bought a bunch of stuff. And I think that was some. If my memory serves me, that was probably some money that we collected through donations. So that could be something to get next. There we choose, yeah. yeah. So, um, tax, tax bankruptcy account, $11. Anybody have any? And Mr. Kate, maybe because of your history and dealing with these, is that something dedicated the city has to have? Like, if there's a tax bankruptcy or something? Okay. I don't know. That was my only thought is maybe it was a dedicated fund that the city had to have. So if somebody went into bankruptcy, that money, came, I don't know. So it was open in 2014. It has never had more than $11, 11 11 Okay. <laughs> there you go. 2014 was a number. I know. Yeah. That's good. 2014 yeah. was a very good year. For well, the you got to remember, though, that's when it code, I think, started, right? Oh. So yeah. that's a carryover from the old program. Gotcha. You can see the old program. Okay. okay. Uh, water acquisition fund, two hundred thirteen thousand. That I'm assuming that's the money for us buying water rights. Something we've done every year. We put money into it. The good thing is, like I report to you, I think we have seven hundred. I go back and match them. Seven hundred eighty-nine acre feet of water that we're authorized to pump every year. With the thirty percent we're done. We're now we're thirty-five. You know, we're down to like seven thirty something. We've only pumped so far. I think in this year we looked at it all night, it was 134-ish acre feet, 150. So you can see the council has done really well in buying water. We've done new subdivision that's coming online. But even if we doubled our pumping, still only put us at like two or 300,000 acre feet of water, we own 789 acre feet. So there's something to think about there. Um, Gas reserve for future audits. We know what that's for. Uh, we've been pointing there. Tree mitigation replacement fund, 2400 there. I know what the account's for. I'm just not sure we've ever put any money in it for a number of years. Well, O'Reilly's put money in. I mean, uh, AutoZone. AutoZone put money in. When they go. If, if yeah. that corresponds. So, in 2014, 
2014 okay. was rolled over for 2400 there's not been a transaction other than putting interest in it to date bringing it to 2435. so that's when o'reilly's i was here during that negotiation jerry jerry stone they said something about ten thousand. jerry stone how much would you give us and i think that that jerry said well the 24 i would bet Maybe so. he said is that a, is that fair and the guy goes we'll cut that and that's where that money that's, that's the only time moving. A larger historic, whatever they call the tree, they can remove that and pay a fee to the city, or in exchange, remove that tree and plant X number of trees in it. So they planted some trees, and then that was a dollar amount the council agreed to go with them on. So the only one right now that we, I mean, we had um, Saddle Ridge has probably had some trees in there, had, but they're planting so many trees, like it's two per half. They, they're planting more trees and they take it out, and then the other two don't have trees that I think are actually removed. So, um, Library reserve account, we have 3600 in there. Uh, reserve fund, that's just, I guess, money we put in there for reserves for some other things yeah. down the road. This is on top of a CD we have. Do we have any Remember we had like a slush fund a while, uh, this was back in, before they built the, or they were building the animal control, and they took some of that money from there. Right to build the animal control. Right. Oh, okay. So I don't know. Since 2015, we've only had interest put in. Uh, in uh, 331 2015 you have 3600 and it's just an interest in, so nothing's been taken since then mm -hmm. and then our last one is that museum fund of 195 dollars i think maybe we bought like old museum again museum i don't in all the stories i've heard of that i don't realistically think we're ever going to revamp that house down there to be a lot where i think it'll cost too much money for everybody we've heard I think we just need to realistically approach the Gidleys and see what they're willing to let us do if we have a game plan. Because we're stuck in the 25 year thing. I feel like it was to like 20, 30, 20, 40 something to where we can't do anything. But in hearing uh, Mr. K, our previous attorney talk before, I know he's made comments of I think the Gidleys might let you do if you just approach them. And you had a plan, not just, hey, we're going to actually had a plan. We want to do this in place and to honor, you know, they, they did approve the, the Boy Scout project. Finally, that got approved as the Eagle Scout project. Um, they're working through Eagle. They denied it the first time, but I had to send a letter showing that it was city property, not owned by somebody else. So if the Gidley House is labeled as historic, which I don't know if it is. I don't believe it is. If it, ever, if it ever gets labeled as historic, then we can use uh, from, we can use hot tax. Okay. Uh, Who makes that designation? The state? Right. The historic commission? You have to apply, I think. But it costs so much. I looked at something. I, for some reason, I want to say when I looked at it, it didn't. I briefly, it, it wouldn't have met qualifications. But I'll check it again. Let's see if maybe we can do it. Let's, let's see if we can use some of that hotel tax. It's a state. Okay. okay. Martin Gonzalez is head of the commission. Yes, sir. Martin, we'd like to reach out to him. Yeah. 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 Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Uh, so there's two money market accounts, a water money market and a gas money market. Um, the water money market has 190000 in it. That intrigued me because we were trying to do radio read meters. <coughs> so we just purchased 200 more. Uh, in talking with the office here, we're buying these meters, but we're putting them in these new developments because they're buying them to put them in. And we're, we're not really gaining any ground in the city. So anytime they buy one, I'd love to see that money set off to the side to just buy more meters. So we're not losing, but 190,000, I'm not saying all of them, but maybe we can buy another couple 200, which cost us roughly 60,000 and prices going up. But if we can use some of that money market fund, buy another 200 meters and that get James a pretty good jump start on the meters outside of town, correct? Yes. Which is where we waste a lot of our time reading meters, driving so far. Um, this food for thought, we didn't think about. Uh, we'll jump into the CDs. We have a jumbo CD for 250. The sports complex CD, which is where I believe the HB money went, is 26,000. So the other uh, fee we talked about further up, I think we can maybe use. Museum fund CD, 62. Park improvement CD of 1,000. Uh, City of library CD, 68,000. While in your CD is 159. I believe that was money that was talked about for the community center, correct? Okay. Uh, 
We have a CD that was opened October 5th, 2021 with 141,000 in it. Another one opened January 24th, 2022 with 100, basically 31,000 in it. Water reserve CD with 12,000 in it. A 2007 CD with 1,000. And then that last one cut off. It's a 1994 5,000. So I don't know the October 5th, 2021, or the January 24th, 2022 CDs. Don't know what those were open for. They're not earmarked anything. I don't know. Maybe it's just money we have that if we wanted to cash them in, I don't know. So. How do we find out? That's what I want to find out what's no, their dedicated fund. And that's what I need to know. Nobody. If we call the bank, they're just going to tell you the CD that was open. Just someone came in and opened it. We just renewed the 250 that what two months ago yeah so uh, but the rest of these i just and that's what i've been talking to Matt about i just need to know i know you know like pots reserved i know that my impact fees reserved but what can i just transfer shorten these lists up and just put it in full cash the general fund which i think is the majority of that except for five we're not talking about we don't want to use that whole money Right, but we also know that this next year is going to be fairly tight on us with doing the distribution of obligation. So we've got to free up some some capital now, and there's several things we're talking about doing to free up some capital, hopefully, to get everybody what they need, take care of our employees, and still provide the service to our citizens as cheap as possible. So no matter what we do, we'll be cheaper. So CD is there one uh, for the water bill from the. So that was my thought. I'm thinking maybe one was some CRF money that we had gotten that we earmarked that we stuck over there. We just so that's what I'm thinking on those. We didn't ever have to say, use the ones at 21. But all the 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 money for the it's over. If you look at 600, that's where I have all that. So I allocated all of that over to 600. It's right here. No, no, we, we understand. So we think. I mean, we've got the well covered. The money was there. I think we just, my opinion, of course, I don't, the CDs were open for that thought process, but we were able to just bankroll it over here and save this. So it still frees up this money if we have something else we need to do. What I'm thinking is the money that we got for the, the initial COVID mm -hmm. CRF funds, not the ARP funds. That was 86500 <coughs> That was 86000 the ARP was 379 times two, we get it the next uh, part. No, but the original with the CRF was, there was two payments. Yeah, there was two so payments. Right. Whatever that 86 times two for that. That yeah. was the previous budget. Yeah, and, and that money. It was that, seven, four, yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Okay. And that money was, let's call it earmarked money, right? We had to meet a qualification to get it. And we met that qualification. We used uh, the police officer's salary. So that is now free money to use in general fund. We don't have to use right. it just for those. So just food for thought because we're about to let the partners up and talk on what they want in the wish list. And so there we go. Any questions on funds we have? If you have some later, email me, call me. I'll be more than happy to do whatever research with Lynette that we can with me. It's just easier with me because they're busy keeping the day-to-day -day kind of feels and everything going where I can kind of shift gears quicker and work on it. Um, I've kind of looked, I've looked at some utility rates on where we, I think we're gonna have to raise across the board and talking with uh, Virginia, I'm printing some reports, we're gonna have to, our base is gonna have to kick up, i say quite a bit, you know, a few dollars probably, and then our tier system would really make our, when I did the numbers, I was really surprised. I didn't think we brought in a whole bunch on that tier system. I thought it was the base rate. A lot of our money comes in on that tier system with the water. When you pump over 3,000 is when you start kicking into that tier system. And we, we actually, the majority of our money comes in from the tier system, from those higher water users. But, You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> you may not like me when you hear my rent now. Oh, I pay water bills all over the place. And Ours is by far the cheapest I've ever paid. I mean, I, we were looking at they're cheap. And I think even our utilities is cheap. I mean, every all, all of Lytle compared to outlying cities and stuff, we're, we're really under. We're, we're, even if I were to, if we went with what I say we go to, you know, which would be a, 
a substantial, but it's a decent increase. It would still put us ten dollars lower than the next closest city, and twenty dollars lower than most around us in the state average per month. Per customer. Yeah, yeah, per customer. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we're way behind, and we've known that for a while. Like the data has been raised 2018-2019 for the last year. My goal is that we don't take a loss. We look at building permits. We need to probably go up on those because there is a cost associated to pay the inspector to go, and we are covering that cost. What we're not covering is a plan review cost and the cost of the internal workings of our employees here to produce and coordinate all that. So every time something built here, the city is taking a loss on that. We cannot take losses. We have to. Fair enough, we got to cover our costs. Is it a commercial or is it a residential? All the way across the board. All of them. Our health insurance is on us. Our, uh, what, I can't think of what, uh, it went up $100, right? 18% increase on our health insurance also is what our health insurance went up on. Our, the other one I got from TML for our uh, workers' comp. Workers' comp, it looks like it's probably going to be a 20% increase. Every there's an increase to everybody, and we can't keep absorbing that. We're doing a disservice to our taxpayers because at some point we're going to hit them with something a lot larger than we need to, and they're going to really hate us in versus hitting them a little bit at a time. We don't even work with cop. We don't have any big major clients. No, we don't. I mean, it's just they go up. I mean, it's just a, a ice right. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, department heads. Yeah, I'll go. Any, any no, no, no. <laughs> Whenever you're already, I'll go. <laughs> Let's go, yeah. Richie. <laughs> Come on up. You're ready to start on this yeah, side of the room. We'll go that way. Richie, you got 15 minutes. I don't need that long. They'll run me out of here oh, in 10. Really? Oh, really? Um, so really, you know, we're not adding, we're not, obviously we're not going to try to add any officers this year. We are going to have to fill Matt's position, uh, you know, once he becomes a uh, down here, if, you know, he makes probation or whatever it is. Um, or if he wants to raise the water rates too much, maybe run him out of town. But, you know, <laughs> Mr. So, I'll just get this to you, sir. I'm, I yeah, I'll, I'll scan everything in for Mr. Rodriguez. Yeah, we'll time. Yeah. These are just some notes. Um, so, so again, big picture, not looking at hiring any officers. We will. You know, fill Matt's position, probably be at first year time we can do that. Next year, we'll just, we're going to be monitoring closely. I would think that minimally next, uh, this time next year, we're going to be trying to hire at least two officers. Prior to that, we're going to really have to look at our salary, not for our chief and captains and sergeants, but for those patrolman positions. Right now, you know, uh, everything's gone up, and, and we're going to really, for us to be able to recruit people, we're really going to have to, you know, Look at just the, the, the patrolman positions and do some adjustments. We'll be looking at that as we get into next year. You know, I mean, we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna have to do something on that line. If you'll see, this, this is a, a budget workshop, a budget worksheet. This is kind of some of the basic stuff that the police department goes through on an annual. And I'm just gonna start. We'll look at their uniforms and cleaning. We were at thirteen thousand last year, trying to get fourteen thousand this year. We added a new officer. Um, John, and we actually did not adjust that any to cover his seventy-five dollar a month allowance. So when you see the nine thousand dollar uniform allowance, that's actually what we pay seventy-five dollars an officer per month. So ten officers, seven hundred fifty dollars a month is what we pay out in uniform. So the other is for vest and thing. Order two vests today, twenty-three hundred dollars for two body body armor. That's not even with rifle plates. We're going to have to get rifle plates for the guys. In the new budget year, you know that's just part of what I mean. Again, we are faced with just increasing pricing. If you can find something, it's high. I mean, there's nothing cheap. When you can buy, I'm just not going to buy the cheapest bulletproof vest for somebody. I don't want to look at somebody's wife and say, "Well, I'm sorry, you know," but you know, we saved a few bucks. It's you know, so it's kind of scary. But that's uh, overall compensation. That's your Christmas bonus. That that's just based on the officers. Cell phone allowance again. That's based on the officers. Leads online, that is a database we use to, for pawn shop and people that pawn stuff all across the state. That hasn't changed. Cop sync is our 
computers we use in our cars. We write tickets. It's, it's coordinated with the court. Uh, that hasn't changed. There might be a little bit. And I, I did put on it that I thought it was under that repairs and maintenance. I didn't know it had its own deal there, but you can look at that when you, you can look at that. Uh, janitorial supplies, we can stay at $500, not a big issue there. Uh, we got postage. It says $2,000. I think we're sharing with municipal court. I do not know. It's fine. We, we do mail a lot of our cases to Jordan and Hondo. Well, Hondo now we don't. Now we actually got an electronic system, so that's pretty cool. But we do mail cases. It's seven, eight dollars every time I mail a case. So we do send a lot of stuff in mail, but it's not anywhere near a budget issue. I don't think. I don't think it's ever been. Uh, police department supplies. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. That's everything from ammunition to taser cartridges, which are now about forty dollars a piece, and gun holds two of them. That comes up as you guys are training, you know, you're spending a lot on that. So 9500 that's plenty, you know. I mean, I would even hesitate to go down, but I, I'm just not sure where these costs are gonna where these costs are gonna go. And that's the only reason. If I knew if we did weren't in the particular scenario we're in. Miscellaneous equipment, it was thirteen thousand dollars last year. Thirteen thousand is fine. Miscellaneous equipment is actually equipment. That's everything from we have to replace a computer. We have to buy guns. We have to buy uh, tasers, which we need a few new tasers. Uh, they're about $2,700, I think, for the taser and the camera. We'll need a couple of them. Uh, that's also, um, just, it's, it's a lot of different things that fall in there, you know. Uh, repairs and maintenance facility, I think we'll be okay on the $4,000. we have got to get some work done on the floors. We still need some exterior lights replaced, but we're doing our own lawn care now, so we're not paying that $100 and something dollars a month. So a lot of that for a hundred, I don't know how much, do you remember how much it was? Yeah, anyway, so we're not paying that. So 4,000, we should be able to get done there. Repairs and maintenance system and equipment. So looking at that, there's a lot of different stuff that gets put into these budgets that, that Ms. Compton, and, and not anything bad, but you know, she would kind of divide stuff around and you really didn't know what it, where it was coming from. But again, sometimes it was easier just to say, okay, well fine, as long as you know that. But reoccurring, we've got eForce. That's our records management system. It was forty-seven hundred, almost forty-eight hundred dollars this year. Cop Sync was is the seventy-six hundred we talked about earlier. Frontera, I'm not sure what we're paying them. I haven't really, I don't know. Uh, do you know what we're paying particularly? So we don't really know what we're paying them on our portion. So I don't know about that. Uh, and that would be nice to know only so we can see. We have got to get new body worn videos. It's going to cost about nine thousand a year. We're, I'm going to meet with somebody tomorrow night. Hate driving in from Dallas. He's coming from Kilgore to here. He's got places in the morning, but we're, we're going to try to get them out of this year's budget because we need uh, we need some uh, the stuff we got is about five years old, and uh, we store our own data. This new stuff is all cloud based. It's just going to be a whole lot better, you know. Is so, the nine thousand a yearly like maintenance? That's your sure. yeah. That's That's sure. That's Nine thousand a year. We need to buy it. For yeah. Okay. That's it. You know. And again, that's something we're gonna. I mean, I don't know any way around it because the video and stuff now, high definition video. I mean, that's just. There's really not. I can tell you from my time at the PD managing all the the IT stuff and the video storage. All of our patrol cars are in high def. All the body cams are in high def. And we were storing a lot of video on external hard drives and stuff like that. So if we can get this back to cloud based, it's gonna be better on us. Because, as you know, we had a major, you know, failure of one of our NASs, and it costs us a lot of money to get that recovered. Yeah, to get it recovered. Uh, luckily, we got probably ninety to ninety-five percent of it recovered. Yeah. But we had a lot of cases that were on there that we were filming. So, so yeah, I mean, this is just kind of so that's about ten body cameras, you know, through. I really two or three different companies. That's about 10 body cameras, you know, which will get us going. But as we, you know, we have to add a couple off, we're just going to increase the price. Now, um, this buying the body camera, is there some kind of lease? No, this is like a lease. Three, this can do a three year lease where they refresh the cameras after three years. I'll have to get, once we, you know, I, I mean, I've got a couple, I've got to think they got them or not. It's going to give me a better picture. But unfortunately, like body cameras and quality body cameras, I mean, that's just part of what, the, nowadays, that just costs doing business, just like having buy a police car. I mean, we can't. We can skimp and do all kinds of stuff, but oh my gosh, I mean, all it takes one incident, and you know, we just want to make sure you've got quality equipment and, and, and the stuff we've got is was good. It's just I don't like it, but something that's five years old, it's a body worn camera. That it's just not. It's just not. Uh, it's not going to have the quality. I mean, it's just not. It's not meant to. 
they're not meant, they'll tell you it's not meant to last that long. What are you nuts? You know, I mean, you got to replace those things every several years, you know. So, anyway, that's the that's the so I don't know how I don't really know until I can meet with Matt and Lynette and see exactly what all has been getting charged into this. I don't really know. That's kind of a lot of the IT stuff that you know would fall in there. And I think sometimes we get a portion. So I don't really know what that what that means. But I can tell you those are three things. Now, that's also when we had to fix like a, oh, if you had to go fix a computer, I guess maybe we used to fix a computer. I don't know. We don't really do a lot of fixing on computers now, you know. So I don't know what that would. Again, a lot of these titles here were created 20, 30 years ago, you know, and we're just using the same title. It could probably be. Um, so repairs, maintenance. Uh, and vehicles. Uh, are any questions on that one before I go on if I'm talking too fast? No. Okay. Repairs, maintenance, and vehicles. So I think we budgeted 15000 this year, which would have been perfectly fine had the titles come in like in a normal year. You order them October by January or November sometimes. December, your vehicles are outfitted and they're on the road. Well, we didn't. So we have free vehicles with pushing 150 pay a piece. I don't know the exact numbers in front, but they're all high in the 140s, I believe. Um, it just cost us a lot to keep them on the road. We had to put a lot more money in them than, than really we should have. But unfortunately, we had no option because uh, we can't just start parking cars and not have, you know, I mean, we, we're not even in a situation like to save gas. We can double up a lot because we have such an expanse of these subdivisions and, and you know, I'm afraid now, unfortunately, in, in, a, in a real smaller community with less going on, I think we could we could get by with a lot of that. But now we're not really in that environment. So I don't know what, uh, I think, you know, we're going to go over this year, which I figured, but I, I think we can go to 13,000. We go down a little bit. About 3,000, that's our GPS tracking system. That allows us to track the vehicles. It monitors when they need oil changes. It monitors when they need tire rotations. But the main thing it does is enable me to come in there and say, hey, you know, where did you guys go last night or for the office? You know, we can we can really just, I mean, if, if someone breaks, goes over the speed limit, you know, to a certain amount, I get a, a text message or whatever. So it's a wonderful tool, um, but it does cost. And, and anyway, so I think we can go down a little there because we should have those new Tahoe's and those other vehicles should be off primary line. At least two of them will be off primary line. One will be kind of back up. Um, any questions on the vehicle maintenance and repairs? Uh, of course, another thing we're faced with vehicle maintenance and repairs, rising costs, labor costs, parts availability, uh, sometimes having to buy something more expensive than you probably want because the cheaper version is uh, on back order, maybe here in six or eight weeks. Well, I mean, I, I, that doesn't work. It might work if I've got a couple of spare cars in the house. It doesn't work when I'm trying to provide you know, again, this is not me. This is this is stuff for the city. So seminars, travel, and training. Um, we we moved it to five thousand. We we really had some issues during COVID. We didn't get a lot done. We are going to go over a little this year. I do have some. We are going to transfer some money over. Uh, uh, we do about twenty seven hundred left in that uh, comptroller fund. We'll be moving it over. Uh, but we're still going to probably go over a little bit because I do have four officers going to a SWAT class in September, and uh, and some other classes that officers are already in that are that they really we really need to get some people into. We've got some new officers, younger officers, and they need some training. Uh, and with COVID, for a couple of them, they, we just did a lot of stuff. The hands-on training stuff was not available. Now, also, so I'm going to ask for eight thousand. But also in the past, the fire marshal training came out of the emergency management. Now that's because before we had a fire marshal, before Matt was fire marshal, we had a fund called emergency management slash fire marshal. When we had, when we became fire marshals, miraculously, it became emergency management because nobody wanted us to get to that money. So anyway, we've been using that for some of the fire marshal training. So what we'll do now is that fire marshal training, if we have to go to conference or Matt's got to keep up his certification, you know, or whatever, we will we'll have the money in here to do that. The only thing I'm emergency management if we go like emergency management, uh, something dedicated that's emergency management to make a while of emergency management. Does that make sense? Um, but we do, we are, we have had a lot of, I mean, this Uvalde situation was terrible, obviously, tragedy. Uh, it has opened up a lot of training opportunities that are some 
funded training opportunity, so I have got officers working, uh, getting out some, some free classes. Uh, but uh, that's that. Uh, gasoline and oil. I, did we budget? Were fifteen thousand budget on that, or was it twenty thousand? I might have made a mistake there. I'm trying to think. I, I'm so sorry. That's sixty-seven point. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Profit fifteen. We actually had twenty, but you know we're running a hundred dollars a day. I'm going to say we probably, unfortunately, need to budget about thirty thousand. You know, that's less than what we're doing right now. But I'm hoping that the gas prices. Uh, you know, we had a lot left over when COVID and gas prices went down. You know, we had a huge surplus, and now it's coming back and kicking us on the other way. So I just coded out filming for the last two months mm -hmm. for you, so you're probably going to have a thousand bucks and you will be over. Oh, yeah, where there's no way. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anybody that's not going to be over in fuel. You know, I mean, that's not even a, yeah. So we will be over there and we'll have to figure something out. Again, a lot of stuff, this company knew we were going to be over on a lot of stuff. You know, we talk about some of these things. Obviously, that's kind of irrelevant at this point in the game. Uh, salaries, that's on the back page here. So, uh, you know, we can remove the court clerk and related expenses. Uh, we'll have to keep uh, deer salary in there. Uh, I think Ms. Compton normally would add about five to 8000 for overtime. That also works vacation pay, et cetera, would be in that. Uh, now, with mass position open, we should have much of the issue on the new budget with overtime. I mean, we should have ways, we should have an excess. Uh, we'll be able to be, we, we might get by without that that amount of money, and we just a little bit, like maybe 3000 in overtime or something. On, when I put in holiday, it was considered your overtime, so, you know, it's confusing. But um, I put around anywhere between 2900 and 2100 um, depending on kind of left and Oh, see, I forgot about that because there's holiday. I forgot because there's holiday pay for all the officers. So that can we add a holiday? So we've added so so that each officer gets about two or three thousand dollars a year in holiday. So that's about uh, nine officers. That's about twenty. That's almost twenty five thousand a year. Uh, twenty one thousand, not including the opening for Matt's salary. So okay. So that's what that's just to cover that's just to cover the guaranteed holiday pay they're going to get. That's no overtime. So we can, you know, we can work with that because we won't be using Matt's entirety of the salary for overtime. So we can probably build some up, uh, and then at some point in time we replace him. That position will probably come in at a. We probably will place him with a patrolman and do a promotion to the department. But again, there's always the op there's always the option that that may not happen. We may not have that. Well, we don't know. I mean, the truth is, if I end up replacing Matt, it's going to be Matt's salary. If I have to hire a lieutenant with his qualifications, Give me a number. well, I mean that's like sixty-five thousand or something. I mean sixty-seven thousand with all of those things. Yeah, but I mean that's what. So whatever his salary is right now is all you need to put in the budget, and I wouldn't even worry about overtime. I think we can make all that work out of that. That's what we've got. We've got it built that way. You know, I mean just to, now. Whatever we got vehicles. So if if we want to try to, it seems kind of ridiculous talking about buying vehicles when I ain't got my other ones that we bought last year. I could run it, but unfortunately we are going to have to seriously look at something. Uh, we can, uh, you know, we talked about two. We talked about we could get one. Um, they got up as well. But if we want to get one new vehicle ordered, for example, and we want to go through this leasing company. You know that a lot of places around us at a uh, Frio County, bunch of Bar Army, I think, Somerset, Frio County use a lot of places use it. But a new vehicle is probably going to cost you. Well, he has here about if you pay seventy five thousand for a new vehicle, okay, that's upfitted and everything, which is probably going to be actually probably actually it's going to be about closer to probably close to eighty right now. Probably probably close to eighty. But if it's seventy five thousand, if you do a four year, you do four payments. You know, four year you do a uh, payment of uh, twenty thousand, just say about twenty one, twenty two thousand a year for four years, and then a dollar at the end you, you buy it out. You know, that's on a four year. Now you go to a five year, you pay maybe eighteen thousand. But I'd say about four year pay. Try to budget paying about twenty. I like, I like the four year. That's what I think. I don't know. You can do three year if you want, but 
That's if we need to buy a car. Now, if you tell me, hey, the budget is so tight, we don't have 20000 Well, the truth is, I'd rather have 20000 to make sure the officer gets the protective equipment they may need and the training because all the nicest fleet in the world is worthless without the human resource to, to be behind it. So that's something, you know, if we, if we have to go without a vehicle this year, I mean, it could be done. I mean, you know, we're going to push it, you know, push a little bit, but we'll do, um, we, like I said, it can be done. You know, we, I think we might have one more year, you know, before things really fire up. I mean, we'll have two new vehicles. So, I mean, I don't know. We'll, but that's that. Um, if, of course, we need, if we have money for two vehicles, then it'd be, you know, $42,000 a year over four years, for example. And that's pretty much everything. Can you think of that something I'm missing? No, everything was salaries with you and the two new cars. And yeah, I mean, cars. salaries were going to be, salaries were not adding anybody. So that'll be just, you know, whatever, you know. And then uh, cars is whatever. I mean, again, we don't be nice, but, you know. The biggest deal tonight is we, we need to know everybody's wants and needs kind of thing that way when we start to build final numbers we can say this works or hey it doesn't work we need to cut somewhere and work i mean we'll look at cars and stuff like that first we need is to there cut. any other capital uh purchases that you need at and that would be like what um, any big ticket items <coughs> I mean, I thought, can, can you think I don't, I mean, I don't think about it. Yeah, Coming from the PD, I mean, we basically the only thing is is the cars. The biggest capital item is going to be cars. And then getting that's, body cameras. That's more important. Body cameras more important. And cars are cars are good. The issue is that, again, I have a little trouble saying give me some cars and this next time this time next year we still might be waiting to get them what we can get them on the road. That may be the new standard. You may have to buy stuff a year in advance. And you know, as a kid, you got to buy stuff and wait in the mail. It takes 12, 14 weeks to get stuff. Probably this big, you know, from it's kind of weird, but are there any repairs or anything that need to be done to the PD? You know, we're gonna really we've got some minor stuff, but if it's tight, you know, we need to work on the floors. Other got, than what you yeah, here. yeah, I don't think we have anything. I mean, we talked about floors, we talked about I think the general maintenance of PD was good. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. can I get a seal coat of parking lot Some soon point. over there? But I think we can still go another year yeah. or so over there for the seal coat on the yeah. parking lot. Right we're not any work mm -hmm. to talk to that. Yeah, that, that guy, well, to do it. Yes, Danny knows that guy. Yeah, the, he did, Danny paid him. So they can talk to them. Maybe he'll be happy to, as, as a tax write off for his business, maybe he'll still go for it. He said he wanted to take care of PD and wanted to take care of fire department. Fire department is rolling up in the still So if we can get the PD done. Yeah. I can get Danny to reach out to him, please too. But so that is it in a nutshell. I don't have anything anything major other than we're going to try to work on body cams. I've got the biggest problem I got right now is I've got to try to make this work on this year's budget, you know, to get and, and then once we get kind of through this, then we can start sitting around and looking at how we can move, you know, and maybe have to amend a few things, you know, a little bit, uh, which is what we, uh, you know, done. But uh, I think once we get this next year's budget, obviously I can't predict any major emergency. You know, we had our repeater go down, for example, but we had some funds through the federal government. I think we used some of those, uh, you know, American Rescue Funds or whatever. So that's it. Any questions? I would entertain any questions. I, I, I you know, I, of course, obviously, I have, can give you more detailed information than you probably ever want. I can sit here all night long and talk about the police department and what we're trying to do. The biggest thing we're trying to do right now is retain officers, and we are trying to get our officers at the highest level training we can get them at. Is that going to cost anyone? What? The excess training. No, I mean, that's, if we can get that in the budget, we'll be fine. That, that eight thousand. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. I mean, we're not like we don't have to like do anything massive. We just have to stay on it, you know. And uh, right. we're fortunate. Good. And here we are. Okay. Uh, eight oh eight. This takes a quick five minute break. No, finish up. Quick five minute break. You gotta go over there. Thanks, Richie. Yes, sir. Uh, look, no soda, no, no candy. No. What are you gonna get? Okay.
Okay. Sell stats, man. There you go. I gotta get the gotta pump those numbers up. I like that big way of thinking right there. Shop local. Do y'all have another problem? Another meeting next week? Another one of these next week? July. Yeah. Well, it is next week, isn't it? Yeah. The six. The six. Yeah, next week it's a six. It's the same thing because I'm not going to be here next. So I've got to put all these numbers together within a week. We'll have to work on putting them all together and six. Then we'll know, nice. hey, this is how much money you're going to need and have a holiday. to make this budget work. Awesome. And then we'll know realistically if that's a. Yeah, me too. Or, or the preliminary values on the real property. Oh, I sent that live for Friday. Yeah, I thought I saw it. I, I did. 226 or something? Something like that. I can look for you real quick. That's, that's what all this going off memory. We can start, then I can tell you here. Okay. So, all right, let's go ahead. Thanks. <laughs> oh, James got one. I don't want to do it. <laughs> we'll be quick. Uh, just one thing I like to do this year before it gets cold is uh, when I rise up booster station again. We thought we had a pretty good setup. And it's well, can, so. <laughs> it's not so happy. Do you have a breakdown on what that cost would be? No, I, I have priced one. I, I don't know exactly how to anchor, anchor something like that. But I just have to do a better job. Uh, Matt's looking at a piece of equipment, multiple piece of equipment for us. I think we're going to transfer a little bit of money from this year for not buying it. But uh, I get a, like a small backhoe with a sweeper attachment. It's like a bobcat. So what we're looking at is it's made by JCB. It is a a mini backhoe. So think about a backhoe, a mini version. We talked about the mini excavator for them. That would be great, but it's one piece of equipment. They still have the over 20 or 25-year-old bobcat that we have in the city. It runs good. I think it's got 900 and something hours on it. It's an old piece of equipment, though. My thought process was can we take that old piece of equipment trade it in, buy a brand new piece of equipment, and turn two things into one. It's a small piece of equipment. We can buy attachments for it. Mm -hmm. uh, the pricing I've got right now is the machine and a, uh, a grapple arm for the front. The buckets, of course, but then a grapple arm for the front as a this year's attachment. That way we have brush or something. They've got the ability with the machine to pick it up versus by hand. Um, Again, we reached out to that leasing company uh, for leasing it over four years, and it was like twenty-seven four a year with a one dollar buyout at the end. So that with two cars, sixty-five seventy thousand a year versus a hundred thousand for this and one hundred sixty thousand for cars. Look, we got to finance that out. Good thing is, in this year's budget, James has got forty thousand. For the purchase of it was supposed to be a trencher a small machine we tried to do a mini excavator but the size they needed that wasn't enough money to cover it so we've already got his first payment plus half of the pd's first payment if we were to transfer that forty thousand to next year's budget to cover a cost we still so, have 50 or fourteen thousand left in materials and supplies I see. so we're, we're we're doing good and i think this is a piece of machine i'm trying to help james right i don't Knowing what they do and the type of machines they need, I think this machine will be used a lot in the city. It will have the one foot bucket in the back James is wanting. And it's just, I think it's going to be a machine they use forever versus the big backhoe. It will give that big piece of machinery that costs a couple hundred thousand dollars to buy more of a break. Give us the ability to rest it more and use the cheaper, smaller machine that really is what we're probably going to use most of the time. Okay. Anything else? I guess on our uh, material, our clamps and stuff, all that stuff is going up, so we're going to need a little bit more money. Uh, we had scheduled 8% across the board for that, for materials. What? I've scheduled 8% increase for, for oh, right. uh, materials. Uh, we put a little stock, we keep it stocked. Uh, whenever we use a clamp, we usually order one to replace it. So, the, the main waterline clamps, yes, sir. Okay. They run anywhere from three quarter to ten tens. Those ten tens run about three hundred dollars. 
a small clamps on a line like 30 40 dollars six inch clamps that are three quarter are like 80 dollars so everything's really going up um, that in saddles you know they're brass anything with brass couplings it's all gone up um, do you have any changes in salary in your employment i just thought we would we talked about putting one on full time. If right. we move just that one position to full time to so cover the cost of his uh, retirement and medical benefits, would no, be, no new employees. No, no, yeah, we cannot. In my opinion, I don't think we can afford to put any the, new employees. Yeah, the only thing with another employee could happen is with the certification. So we get that second person with a double, then we'll have an hourly increase. I think Grant's working on that. Am I right? Yeah, so James has got a guy that's working on getting his class C license. We're, we're probably not too far away. He starts his last class or his class to get. Pretty quick, yeah. This so that will give us. Next month he'll take his class and he'll take the, take the C license. So he'll be a, another C license on the water. Yeah, so we need to, this, this, is a, this is a few years back, but I think we estimated like forty-five to fifty-five hundred dollar increase per year. Well, now we we've already taken we've already he had a diesel we've already given him you know I kind of don't hold me to it I remember but I think we're gonna owe him either a dollar dollar and a half. Who are we talking about? Grant. 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 Because we've already given him. I'm with you with yeah. that. I'm just saying as as a job description, not an individual. When you have somebody that is licensed that way, there's a set amount that is, so that's a discussion to have at a later point. So yeah. For budget purposes, that was, I think, the amount that we were projecting. So we need to be prepared for that. How much more? We're here? supposed to have two people in, in public works that are fully certified. 55 or 6. 55 yeah. to 6? Yeah. So let's just have a money. with two licenses. Was that with two like two seats? So that's wastewater and yeah. water. That's so he wouldn't have the wastewater, so that'd be call it three. Yeah, he won't have his wastewater. He he needs three years. He's only been here not quite a year, about a year, I guess. Yeah. But for our city, we need to have two people. Right. Yeah. Inside right. your department. Yeah. 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 We're moving in the right direction there. We're getting training done. Yeah. My biggest push for the city is train people. It is just sending all people off the train. We've got positions in the city that if they're in the certification for it, professional developer, we're going to send you off and try to get it. There's some for city secretary. Uh, there's some in HR for me to go grab again. Public works and whoever had. If there's a certification, let's go. Let's go get it. I'm good for almost three years yet. So or sixty hours. James, are you looking at a, a normal car port? I was looking it up for you. Is that what I you want to do? Just find something that I can anchor down. You know, I don't know if I got four some riders and you're yeah, looking some at something like that grids. yeah they're saying that between 49 4900 and 6000 so so if we looked at I mean high end eight ten thousand we could maybe get something done that would give us that concrete work maybe some electrical with yeah. some hanging heaters or something I don't know the thing the thing is just being able to close it up but then the summer you want to open it up so oh, like what we have, what I was planning on doing is putting some panels, like cattle panels, on the north side and leaving it, let the air go through, and then during the winter time we put tarps on it, close it up, and then I can put a couple of heat lamps in there, and it'll stay above freezing. So, what do you, what would you use this area for facility for? Winterizing the three pumps. Well, that's for the three oh, yeah, pumps. Yeah, so they don't the freeze up. Pumps out yeah. there, you know, that's what they did this year. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, except that we had that wind. Yeah. Micro burst yeah. and it just yeah. it flipped that two door garage over the over the top building. It's behind the uh, fire station too. Hit our siren pole and broke a little piece of plastic oh. too. We need to work on. Yeah. But it worked really good. They came up with that idea and it was it worked really good. We anchored it. We had some rebar. And we built the ground about thirty foot, but it just I, I guess it was wet, you know, and yeah. wind, and it just took it. I can work with James on that. We can work with Scott. Yeah. Just say yeah, I'm so, so I got. Do you have anything for sewer? Any new needs for sewer? I think a lot of the sewer water that stuff's going to be met with certificates of obligation. We got some big water projects, but that's all CFL money. And then the sewer plant is the plan. Mm -hmm. 
No big changes. Okay. No big changes in seven. He's not saying any. We've got James got a list he's kept running, right? We've got a lot of old water lines. Maybe not in this year's budget, we'll have to see where everything falls, but in future budgets, we need to budget so much every year for replacement of old lines. Not just money we actually stick there and not do, but we're gonna replace those old even if I don't care if it's hundred foot some some point we just gotta start digging those old lines up and putting new lines in the ground. Something better than nothing. We got a bunch of two inch steel lines around town that are like we got one going down North Prairie from Rivero Track going to that uh fire hydrant that's leaking. Mm -hmm. That's a two inch steel line on one side. We've repaired it a couple of times. And whenever they get that old, when you start putting a clamp on and you start tightening, it just collapses and you just have to find a happy meeting there. So we'll find in, in we the budget. Like that. Hopefully, we can do something this year, but if not, the following yeah. year, when we really anticipate a lot of this is going to free up for us. It, we'll put some money in James's budget work with him. He can start to identify these lines, and we can budget so much and just try to get as much accomplished as we can. Okay. No different than repairs to a car or a building. We just don't think about it because it's in the ground. All right. When y'all get rich, we'll do the uh, bands for the material. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Sandra Santi. Santi said he's going to ask Pretty much. From nothing much, just uh, getting that pit, uh, that fence that uh, got torn up and I might be saving with the upworks, carport, just getting that fixed up. Um, oh, I had Zamora, I had Zamora come by, uh, he said about 13 25. Um, and what was the what did you say the second one was? Oh, nothing. So, do we have money currently to do that, or do we have to so check it? it was, Sales are probably just still going through the insurance or whatever. Um, I'm not sure how much the insurance is. Not the whole list. How much do you, do you say for the fence? $13,000. $13,000? No, $1,300. $1,300 would probably be cheaper than um, big insurance plan. Yeah. Unless we got something else. No, we we can that. cover that this year's budget. We get that done. If not, Santi's got some money in, in those other free funds you report on every month. There's a building fund. Yeah. The, uh, that fence is considered part of the building, I would assume. We can repair because you've got another fence issue from an accident that we need to get repaired, right? Yeah, now. yeah. That yeah, that one that one still opens all rates. Um it's really we can we can get it fixed too. Uh, it's still functional. Okay, we need so, to get it fixed, we've got fun. If you can get the it. fence guy out, you might as well get we'll get that save part. your save money. Yeah. So how much will that be off the That one I don't know. I didn't have them look at that one, just had them do the other one because then it was torn up more. But he, he's got a building fund that I think the last time we had like 20,000. 20, no, I just want to put it in. Um, um, another thing, uh, maybe uh, I didn't get a price on this is getting some uh, pictures like city fans inside the office area to get the air more circulating in there. Um, with the AC, it, it works, but it doesn't cool cool down. I did the mile often when you get how many? Um, I'm thinking maybe uh, two or three in the main. Area, maybe one in the in the cattery, getting air flowing in there, um, and then uh, getting some ordering some new tracks because um, the ones I ordered in the past uh, have got damaged from raccoons. Uh, they lift up that plate up that trips it. They lift it up in the back, and these have like a guard over over the the lift four. Um, and I I'm a hawk. In Tomahawk, and uh, it's like before when it's 541. I think that's with taxes that they include, this, or the shipping and stuff like that. So, but that's uh, pretty much pretty much it. How about ordering some more of those um, traps that you ordered? You sold more of those? How do they work? Which one? The insects that we. Oh, I put the flies inside. Um, we they were pretty, yeah, we ordered two. They work pretty good. Um, I probably just can. Are you happy with them? I yeah, I'm happy. Them. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with them. They they actually uh, work pretty good in, in the office. Um, if I if I were to order, I can maybe order a better one for the outside, um, the outside of the kennels with the dog track. Um, but those those work those work pretty good though. So the only thing we really went over with you were was the Mora on the. 
pills, which we knew we were going to do. Yes. So I'll have to request the money around, but otherwise, I think other than overtime. Yeah. So we've, we've got to do something with overtime. Yes, yes. And then um, also, uh, I had ordered the, those uh, from Kennel Tech, those uh, chemical, state chemical, the favorites. Mm -hmm. um, that would probably come out of janitorial, wouldn't it? That's where we're um, taking it. Yeah. Um, on that, because I would need to order more canisters. Uh, I'm out right now, but I don't want to order nothing yet because I'm, I want to go over on. How much are those? Uh, I can't remember. I'm a, I'm like, a I'll, quote I'll, I'll I can email it to you too. He had sent me a quote over. Um, but that's about it. Because I guess I ordered two canisters, but I want to order more canisters than two so you can keep it. We are over on the Yeah. The truck still. So well, there's no way for the chip. Yeah, so we so the truck been built. Do you have to have a VIN number yet? No VIN number. He's wait if it's waiting on a chip, he's already got a VIN. It's been produced. The truck's sitting in a lot waiting for a chip from what I got it. Yeah. He uh, he said he hasn't he wasn't able to get a VIN number yet. So, so the thirty one thousand that we have in the current budget for the truck is still sitting there. That gets transferred. Thirty one thousand that covered the truck and your outfitting, right? Up like yeah. the lights and stuff. Like hard, yeah. So that, if we don't get that out of this fiscal year's budget, that's going to be a carryover in his budget for next year to pay for that. So that's going to be a wash to us. It sounds like Santi doesn't have any big ticket items. It's more general maintenance, low cost that we can either work in his current budget, you know, I'd say his current numbers for next year, or just add Saturday. I mean, probably a thousand, couple thousand dollars maybe. And yeah. we can get him, which is good. Since you want to email him to get more, see so if you can get more information from him, since you. Okay. Well, I, remind me tomorrow. I'll shoot him an email and check on it. Truck number locked in, or are there going to be it's, some I, for the name? I have not. No, the truck number's locked in. We bought it on contract price, and it's not okay. price is thing. I don't know where we are. Like I said, I, I dealt with the PD cars, and the guy probably hated me because I called him a long time. I just got. Well, mm -hmm. I'm just emailing him right now and asking. Okay, ask him on the animal control if we got it. If he can get a bin, okay. if he can get a bin, it tells me the truck is at least hit the production line. To be able to but he'll be able to tell us based off a code he gets on where it is. Yeah, two fifty for animal control. So, Sandy, did you understand what Matt was saying earlier about the changes that we have to do with the part time employees? Yes. Do you have any questions about that? Uh, no, I will talk, talk to her again, and I told her if she has any questions, just call you. Yeah. about that as well. So, that, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, we got the it's like maybe in 2018 or 2017, and her hydraulic. Every time she sits down, it just slides her down. Yes, but it found like four. Oh, okay. and they're all going to go again. Okay, and then the one in my <laughs> office that wants to dump me off, I'm like, okay, what are you doing off here? I don't know if it's just the chief chair or what it was. We can send them tonight. Okay, uh, and then I think I don't know if I put this in this year's budget, but I believe it's going to go into next year's budget. We were going to get money to get an iPad for whenever we go to do like reserves. People will put reserves on books. And what happens is you're writing everything down and then something new pops up. So you're constantly like having to run back and forth. And instead of just writing it down or printing it out a nice piece of paper, you can, uh, you can like, tap it. Because um, we can type it on the screen like that. But it's just that makes that that looks like. So we've got some we've got some spare surface tablets that you can use. Okay, just unless, something, just that's all the council in one and surface again. We've got some really old that's what I'm using here. We can probably get Ron Fair to work it up to something to notate on. Yeah, because every time you go back and forth and break back and forth. I think we've got that equipment there. Okay. And then um oh uh, we were getting some kids' chairs to replace what we have right now. We have cloth chairs and we've had accidents with little ones and so I went like something easier to wipe down. And we found them through a company that's called School Outfitters. They cost like, uh, it's going to be $150 for cheap. And then uh, we had also applied for a grant, but they didn't fulfill the grant for anybody this year. They said to try again. 
and this would be for like a Wi-Fi, like a Wi-Fi chair for a patron that comes in and they want to sit with their tablet and their computer space is taken. The other table is taken at least they can sit with their uh, in the chair and it has a tablet space where they can. Work. How many kids chairs do you need? Just two. Only two? Mm -hmm. Well, I actually it was I'm sorry, two plastic chairs for the older kids and then four for the younger kids. And they're but, all 150. Um, minutes. the other ones. <coughs> those are a little bit different. Let me put those to you. Because you, you still have, um, we, we still have money for that. Come here. And then um, we're going to need. How much is the Wi Fi chair? Wi Fi chair, those are like $500 a piece or more. Yeah, that's all we But if we can get the grant, I would rather than to be paid for the food grant. So is that like a, for lack of a better, like when you said at school, you said that. Chair that had like a, an area for you to sit your laptop on. Right, it's kind of like a like, like a gaming chair. Not so much good. a gaming chair, but you know, uh, kind of like what you'll have over there in the back. But it, it's kind of curved. Okay. So, I, I'm just thinking we can. I think Uline. Oh, gee, but Uline has a bunch of stuff too. Uh, would you maybe look on Uline? Okay. Yeah, you know, I don't. Know. I'm just trying to think. Yeah, because uh, I was trying to uh, through the library companies. They were like nine hundred dollars a piece. I'm right? trying to think if we can find the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just cheaper. I, we just need somebody. We're not providing them, but we call it a Wi Fi chair, but it's just a, a desk. A chair puts a desk and take your device on it. Right. Because right now we have those, like, there's the ones that go up back there, the so, trash or whatever, but they're real low. And some people are like, they have a hard time getting off of that. Thing. So, Cassie, we still have 8,800 in technology expense. They can put a Wi Fi chair in technology okay. expense. I can or argue that with an account. Okay. And. Um, and uh, we still have for the chairs. We sell material and supplies for twenty seven hundred. Okay. So you can go ahead and order that in this year. Okay. Okay. And then um, we got the roof. We wanted to put that on the, this next year's budget. And I got a quote for less than nine thousand for the roof because the other quote was a little bit more than what we did. So nine grand for mm -hmm. the roof. Mm -hmm. And that's all. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. That's a lot. She thought it was yeah. Be. Well, the other one I had that. was a lot that's more. So no, that. Are they doing the full roof? The whole that's what it says here. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, that. that's too cheap. I don't know. Real cheap. I just have my whole roof redone for like 30 grand. Yeah. I don't know what that's. But I'm sure about 20. Yeah, I used 30 grand for that one. That one's 14,000. This doesn't have any labor. Yeah, that's all. That's all. This is just the materials. So I'll uh, do a little bit more with, yeah. with that. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. If you want to keep that, I have them in the first That's just the materials. Okay. So, and then, um, <coughs> could I have another 80% on that? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm on the same page. I think I emailed you this from the ABT to install, to upgrade the system because right now our system's not working too much. Right? Um, what, what is this for? Is it a security alarm the, or something? It's for the alarm's not working. See, they're having trouble with it. <clears throat> Frontera um, can't fix it. And they're like, we don't know what to do. So they called ABT and then ABT, oh, you're using an old system. You need to upgrade. Because we had, this was uh, Brooke, or what's that? Brooke? Uh, or whatever it was called before, that's what we got. Well, they were bought out by ABT. So we haven't been able, we need to upgrade it, basically. Brinks. 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 That's it, that's it. I'm so can I ask you that just for me, we have a security alarm at the library. We don't have alarms in any other city in the city. There a reason why we have one at the library versus any other city facility? Knowledge is power. I'm sorry? Knowledge is power. There you go. Well, somebody tried to break in. That's the reason why we had to put it in. Look, we had someone broke into our facility. You took yeah. $5 from the donation thing. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? <laughs> that guy? You can cut it. Well, it was, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm just thinking yeah. cost so I'm, so like, I'm, I'm with Matt. Kind of, I don't have access to y'all's alarms. I don't, if it goes off, it doesn't call a dispatch, right? Oh, yes, it does. It's programmed to do that. It's already. Oh, I thought it would call you because you're. It calls me and then it calls you. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't remember getting a call there. We've never. I, in all my time working back in in twenty years, I've never responded to an alarm at the library. So I'll tell you that it might not even be calling the right dispatch. That might be the problem. I don't know. Does it go off very often? It hasn't gone off in a while. But then it's probably not working because if you got an alarm, it's going to go off. It's going to mess up and go off. <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. You know, I understand we have one. Right. What's the need for one? Why do we need one there, but not at city any other hall city? Or, I mean, I would think City Hall would have one. 
long before a library and a patrol. I'm just thinking out loud, guys. How can we save a little bit? It's not a lot, I know. But is there some reason why we have to have one there? We put it in, I think they put it in because, not only because they tried to break in, but we have all those computers. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I'm just, so basically what happened, so when that alarm got in, I never even was asked about that. I mean, the city just did put this alarm in. I think I found out about later that they had alarm because I didn't think we had any alarm in the city. But, you know, the odds of somebody breaking in now to steal computers is not like it was. What was the alarm? Did they have a cost to put a new alarm in? It's just to upgrade the alarm. I remember it was like $300 was the one-time fee, then it was going to be to upgrade with... Uh, the new pad or whatever, because right now we're using an old system. And also, 60 bucks a month for yes. monitoring that we think may not be working. I don't get it. We need to make sure it's got the right dispatch number, because like Matt said. So, so it's $94 a month. It's $94.74 a month. That's what we're paying. For That's what I was just going to ask. Oh, how much are you paying? And how much is the repair? Cost 300 bucks to upgrade, 400 bucks to upgrade everything. Plus, yeah, plus whatever. So, plus with that other thing. Yeah, I don't think that right now we have I mean, she does have computers in there. She does oh, have that. I, mean, I, I was looking at a total Yeah, I don't think they're calling us. We need, if we're going to have it, we need to really, I need to get whoever doing that and make sure they got, because I, I don't ever remember. Hands, when I would, he's the one that uh, he's on the go away. Let me go oh, check yeah. it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you shouldn't go. Yeah, we didn't have to go in. Cassandra, how much is there? It's $300 is a one time fee and then another $300 is for. Yeah, it's like. It's, the way he set it up, I'm Six like, times, weird to look at it. Yeah. What, what's paying for monitoring? That's what she's saying. We're paying. 94 I think that's including the cameras. Including the what? The cameras are monitored. Cameras are just like they're standing on the right? I, I don't know what she had. I go look at it yeah, if you want. Let's, let's take a look at it because there's you've got Wi-Fi in there. Mm -hmm. There's opportunities you could actually put a Wi-Fi. Put a, a lot cheaper. Put a camera. You can see it. The, the camera. I can't say that because she's got this going to 600. Do we have ABT on anything? No. There's there's no alarms. I only city facility I know has alarms in the library. Like I said, I've never had it go off when I've been working ever. Okay. I'm going to have to look into this. <laughs> I can work with Cassandra to look at it and see if there's maybe a better option for us. Okay. Yeah, that's too bad. We don't have anything at 19235 FM 272790. Is that an auto dollar or something? This is, yeah, I put this in, and this is what was on the bill. 19325 FM 2790. But where is that? That's the library. That's the library? Okay. Yeah. I thought it was going to be one of them ones I put. Do we do the flooring? Is the carpet in there is horrible. How much? 
I just want to make sure that I'm not putting okay. these two chairs and all right, the Wi-Fi and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, I'm trying to it. But in repairs and maintenance, you still you have. There's still money. There's some money in there. Right? Okay. I just want to make yeah. sure. And then we had to work on the septic tank. Let's put the tank in the. No, we got to put it. We got to cap it so we can treat it. Okay. How much? Uh, we don't know how much. It's not that much. And so a lot of this is going to fall in this current year. Okay. So um, just let uh, let Matt work on this ADT thing and see maybe if we can get another option. Okay. And then you didn't get this one. So this is uh, to right, right. the we have a problem with is the AC at work. Um, when they moved it to the, where it is now, the, the door, it hits the, the return. So instead of putting the door inside, they put the door on the outside. So every time I open that door to my office, it gets the return. So then it doesn't make let the air. So I've gotten a quote to see if I could get him to move the door inside so that we wouldn't have to problem. And then he suggested putting a ceiling fan in to kind of help circulate it because it feels like sauna in there, basically. Actually, that space used to be the old pressure. We're, we're talking. Three, four, or five hundred yeah. bucks. Then we think we cover that in this year's budget. Yeah. So, so the only thing, the only thing I would say that other for the next year's budget is the roof. The roof, roof. yeah. That be, okay. So yeah. I've got twenty-seven thousand circled for next year's budget. Everything else you put in here should be able to be yeah. absorbed in this year's. <clears throat> also, one more thing we do have an issue with is that cement table. You know that that thing. They tried, to, they tried to take that before. And good luck. <laughs> Well, they bolted it down, but they managed to like come up a, a little at a time and take it apart. And it didn't have a hole in the middle. And all of a sudden, there's a hole there now. And I'm like, where did that hole come from? They chiseled a hole into the middle where you would put like a, say, yeah, an umbrella. umbrella. But so was never there. if you want to replace that, you go to your line. They've got some all weather, high quality tables that would be a lot more comfortable and more stable. I looked at them, down. and they really not, they bolt down. Okay. We got a catalog in the back of the American. You line, they're uh, awesome. I have a catalog in the back of the American. Oh. Well, we said, oh, you know, we got one with those pictures you're talking about, actually. Oh, the two that much, I think. The new oh, I think, I think the ones, I think they were $700, but I mean, you're talking about something that'll last for, no, it's fine, that'll last for probably 15 points. Who's trying to steal some other things? Somebody ain't got much sense. I don't know, yeah. but if they broke the, the bamboo chair, and they put the bamboo chair down, and then they put the yeah, you know, it's a, you don't have those concrete tables. They're yeah. just, you know, they kind of start wobbling because of the way they, so it's just, some, it's just people, well, it gets used a lot. It's been there for how long? Well, probably like 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. History catalog. Got a bunch of them. Okay. That one is $17. That's a big one. See, not, they're nice, though. Yeah, they're just to get, because it's, I'm concerned with, you know, somebody falling off or hurting themselves, especially if Oh, exactly. And we've been having a lot of ways that we need special needs. Yeah. Well, you know what, Pass? You've got a library reserve fund right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Sure. I see a lot of good stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see a lot of people over here. One more thing. One more thing. You keep saying that. Yes, I know. Uh, Bally Richie. 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 Put mesh up there or keep them from getting, it won't let them go. Just put some garlic up there, they don't. I'm, I'm being yeah. serious. But that's, and then, of course, the all of the, the front area with all those bushes, they're dying because of that Spanish moss. It's like eating them. Those, um, yeah, not that, um, the boxes. So we would like to take them out eventually. Put maybe planters there instead of what's there. Yeah. I'm going to kind of jump in here on the administration and y'all chime in on whatever y'all think too. We're going to have to look at the roof on this facility. 
two big things. Roof here, we developed a leak in Lynette's office the other day, yesterday, with the rain, thank God. Maybe the building just got shot we had rain. Um, James is going to jump up on the roof and look for us to see if there's something obvious we can fix. But we need to get the roof addressed if we've got leaks. And the something other one is... Something that's happened before because it's yeah. already been patched. Once. There. Yeah, so something... So it's, a, it's right here where these AC, but it's not the AC we know. So we've got that. We know we've got pain we need to do. We need to change the color away from ink in work areas, please. To get it to a more neutral color, maybe like we got here. We're going to work on that. And then... Uh, Filing cabinets. Too. So, no, I, I, don't, I don't know about that because we have so many filing cabinets in that front room, in the, in the front. Um, All the pink ones up here? No. Oh, the other ones that have stuff that is like 10 years old okay. that we're going to be able to plans. What, what call in that call? The ones in the. Uh, in the oh, there's. Yeah. Old, old stuff. Yeah, like stuff. Old stuff. So, they're brand new. They're, they haven't even been put together. It's just stuff stuck in there. So we still have Good. some. How many are you talking about? I don't know. We gotta have enough up here for them to file for us to be able to file here in the front. Now, I think based upon what we found, I think we have enough. Do you think? Like about four. Yeah, I think we have enough. Any other big ticket item that y'all can? Massage chair. I mean, we've got typical stuff we'll have to add for you know like certification or membership mm -hmm. sort of thing. I think it's, it's probably going to be good for us to build LEDs from here. So we can work on that. Well, I mean, we can see we've got ceiling. So what, Ronnie, uh, what Ronnie does on these is he takes out the, the ballast and then he changes the bulbs on there. So we found if PD, she has got some bulbs there and you take the ballast out, we just replace the bulbs with LED bulbs. Yeah, if you're from you on, just pop, I said, I they just go right in and, and have something. If we can buy the, the bulbs, I can put them in. I don't care if we'll just get that. Yeah, they're all they're designed they're to work with that. They're just, they're just plug and play with exactly what we've got. But we, they're, they're, they're not the, you know, it's a two with the yeah, it's it's plastic two, basically. Yeah, but we did replace them with the PD, switching everything over to LED. Then. We're almost completely on a larger now LED. Yeah. Yeah. But now this yeah, room that deal here, this, area, yeah, that this is, this was just put on very quickly and very cheaply and it, it was uh it just seemed cool it's really like styrofoam yeah, yeah. we have some places where the ceiling is falling off there yeah that's a okay. pound over here this yeah. one's about to fall off but we can fix those but it looks like they have a reheat oh we're getting the facility reheat uh for city hall uh trying to identify keys I don't know. There's like a million keys that go to a million doors. So we're going to start with the outside doors. Uh, just like at the PD, my goal is to do a level tier system. They're going to come out Thursday and redo it. Uh, like a level, level one being the lowest is going to open up the majority of your exterior doors. A level two, it opens up maybe a couple extra interior doors that we need here. And then the level three is like a max three. Key. Uh, and then based on how we decide here in the office, like I would maybe have a level three that would open an outside door to where I have office, whereas Paul and Lynette would have a level two, which would still get them into my office, just do another door. I have a question, Matt. Do y'all have the um, combinations to all the faults? <laughs> this was the old PD fault. Do you know what it was whenever we had it? I gave all that back to Miss Compton. But uh, we lock our vaults. But you need to probably get a safe company out here. They, 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 they'll, what they'll do is spend a long time. They need to work those mechanisms. And uh, look for Jane first because she's only yeah. doing all the. Uh, yeah. All the uh, but but those. that's something maybe y'all need to put lock up, put somewhere good yeah. because I know it's. Can be. Yeah, we're gonna steal somewhere. Secure. Secure. Cabinet. But everything else, I mean, they can actually sound pretty good. So we have extra, we have extra um, cabinets or do you have any issues? <laughs> yes, I've got a couple more. What are, are they needed? A tablet or a Yeah, I, I can get you a tablet, but we need to look and see if a laptop would help you. We can look at, you may need a laptop versus a tablet. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the batteries. We can take that one or we'll buy a new one. We'll probably buy a new one with a larger screen. Because, well, because the permit clerk's going to need that one. Yeah. You're going to need the new one. But we'll have that budget. We'll, we'll be able to do that with this budget in month, I think. Outside of really roof is our probably the big, hopefully it's nothing major and we can patch it and just keep going for another year or two. Yeah. 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 Yeah
the last day to file is July 22nd. I know. But, no, but that's just a proposed budget. So we could build a budget on what we think now. This is how much money we need. Here's our proposed budget. And then once we get all the rates in, we don't need And then we can reduce it and we're going to have enough to cover. Yeah, we need to be prepared for that first meeting in July. Yeah, so we need to have those rates July 11th. Yep. Have something on the agenda for adopt a new race. And I mean, what I've seen in other cities that, like you're saying, we don't want to hit them with a big old hammer, right? They phase it in over like five years. Yes. Say we're going to go up a cent, two cents, and then get to where we need to be. But. Yeah, we're we're gonna have. You to want to hit him with the hammer? Is that your? Right? No, but we we can't go. So we, rubber mallet. We I think realistically we're gonna have to go up on our rates, yeah. the base rates. Most of the tier rates. The, the, tier, the tier rates are gonna be. Yeah, the tier rates. If we could raise those a, a dollar each tier, we could say they could bring us some good, some decent money in, and then the base rate raise that. I did it all the way up to five. And then five dollars. Considering. Just we look at the rates and also with the folks that live inside the city limits and those. So currently, whatever we adopt for inside the city, it's one and a half times for those outside the city. So, for instance, if we went to a, a base rate for water of $20, the out of towners would pay 30 What is the base rate right now? 12 So that, that's, that's unheard of. It's, I know, that's crazy. Even what, 20 is low. That's what crazy. do other communities have that are rates that? Uh, Right here, so Divine's <coughs> water rate is 40. Base rate? Base rate. It, well, I don't, they just say deposit. Well, uh, it's the best I can find on their website is uh, well, I said the deposit rate. There, there's a hard to find. Let me go to Castro. There's just really good. They actually passed an ordinance and they went the across the So, Castro water rates. For 2022 is $30, and then they've got a tier system kind of like us. That's for residents inside the city. Outside the city, it's 35 and then they actually kept theirs at 30 for the next, from 2022 to 2026. Those stayed the same. Like, they're staying the same for the next five years at 30 Hey, remember, we're, we're only double, like, almost triple what we're. Yes. I, I couldn't find anybody close to us. The state the state average I printed off from TML's website was like 47. We're, we're way low. We're, way low. Quarter, we're a quarter of that. What traditionally has happened after years of these budget meetings is people look at the minimums as affecting those that are on fixed income. Because a single person or a couple normally will not exceed that. Danny Robinson? If his house can water the garden, do everything, he'll never exceed that minimum because he lives by himself. The problem is, I would like to know how long it's been since we have touched that lowest tier. We've always kind of tried to push it up. But we raised the, what was it, before 12? But that's why a lot of times we're he council has been hesitant. That's why that's so low. So and East Medina is 3142. I think we raised it like a dollar. Yeah, maybe. We might raise it a dollar, but it's probably. Yeah. We raise it a dollar, but it's not good, you know. We're it's so like far behind. Right. I, I mean, I think Ben, ben and City, they got it's 27, it's like 27, 12 just to have a meter. Yeah, whether well, you flow no water at all. Yeah, no, I, I got I got property out there. Yeah, and it's so there. 27, 12. I don't even use it. Yeah, James. I, I got a couple of problems here with the way the city does it is we've installed new meters and no one's ever turned them on. They've been on 15 years, we've never made a nickel because we don't charge them. Right. We don't charge people if they turn their water off. But they're not getting the minimum? No, they don't get anything. See, that, we got to change that. I don't know how many of those are, so, but you're going to get a minimum bill whether you flow any water or not. So when we go to turn them on, we have to cut the lock because the lock's been there 15 years. we got to change out the angle stop because it hadn't been turned. we got to replace the meter because it froze up. Yeah. So, but that's the city are, policy. Those are meters that just sit there not using anything? So if you, like yours in Benton City, you'd pay zero for it. You would pay single, but you got a meter. Yeah, I got three meters out there. The only ones turned on. I'm on East Medina. If you have a meter, you pay for it. If it's on or off, you pay every month. Yeah, pay the oh, I, I got a piece of property right yeah. now. You got to water all the way up to the meter. Haven't flown. Yeah, it's on there for 20 <coughs> years, yeah. and it's 50, 
something dollars yeah. a month. Hadn't flown one drop of water in over 20 years. Not got to be water for water. You got pressure on that service line all this time. Service line goes to leak. You got to fix it. That's a problem. The other problem I think we have, and I don't know how many people know it is, but we have some people that are no longer living, that people are living in their house mm -hmm. and using their utilities under their name. And that name, and they still use that at that rate. So, 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 so they got a previous rate that's lower because it's Uncle a, died, so they moved in there, and they just took why over. Is it, <laughs> like, say my grandmother. So, so why, why is her rate lower? Because No. So I mean, it's just these these new people don't have no deposits if they're living on their grandparents' yeah, meter, yeah. you know, their grandparents never put nothing down. So they're living there with no deposits. Mm -hmm. We've had one person that ran three months and skipped out. He's living in his grandma's house. Yeah. Didn't pay the, any payments for three months. When they finally turned him off, he just moved out. My, my utilities are in my grandfather's name. He died over 20 years ago. Yeah, well, I'm just... So we just need to we just need to look at everything, but I think you know we got to remember as a mindset: if we deliver water up to the meter, we're providing a service, and there's a cost that goes with that service. Amen. Yes. So do we do the same thing with gas, though? Yeah. Don't we? We don't push for gas either. Wait, Wait, no, I'm sorry. If you have a meter, whether you flow anything through it or not, you're gonna get a a bare minimum bill from us, right? I think that would be understandable. How many meters do you, are are like that? Uh, I imagine, well, you can look in the book and see how many are off, how many are, I imagine there's a, a hundred of them. Oh. I can ask, I'll ask Virginia tomorrow. You know, that aren't, act, that aren't activated, you know. Well, I mean, even if we were at the state average, you know, that's that's 4700 a month. That's, well, I mean, you, you know, that's over $50,000 a year right there. Just yeah, I wouldn't say you'd have to charge them minimum, but you ought to charge them, you know. Charge them the minimum. Yeah. I think we're not going to have different rates, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, something else we got a problem is is uh, uh, and that's I got in trouble the other day. I jumped a fence to go read a gas meter. <laughs> Lady got upset. She locked her gate first time, seventeen years, and I jumped the fence. She complained that she didn't want me in there because she locked the gate so her kids would be safe. But we have a uh, probably a dozen gas meters that people have. Fenced off and locked that we can't get in. We have one, one on uh, Norvell that they put a wood fence up, six foot wood fence. How do we get to that gas meter if there's an emergency? Is well, we're going to on that. Or their property or probably have to move them. Yeah, you, uh -huh. have, you, have to, you have to cut the service off. You can't service it. You got to cut them off. Yeah. Come for them. We'll work on what the yeah, process I mean, is. But yeah, we got to have our. Some of the problems we have. So that's, that's, that's water, right? Is we're looking at. Yeah, average 47. What about sewer? Okay. How low are we on that? We just started working on water right. a few days ago. So we're, we're low, we're low, 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 low on that, too. On every yeah, single rate, we're low. Are we are right sewer for the river. Yeah, we're low on that. Yeah, and I, I, I'm not anticipating right big, right? But if we could do, I mean, I was just thinking out loud, a base rate of 20 across the board that would raise our water from 12, our sewer from, I think it was 18, and our gas would go up from 15. That's just your base rate. Right? So you pay an extra $5 a month on your utility bill, unless you were a tier user. Now, when you're a tier user, it's your base rate plus that gets her, which is great because that's where we're making a lot of our money. So if you're a big water user, you're going to pay bigger money. So it's just something I'll present some stuff at the uh, next budget workshop that we can look at. Yeah, I mean, even if you're half the state average, you're doubling what we're bringing in on the base rate for water. I was looking at, and I think, and this is just off the top of my head on the base rates, if we went up to the 20, it'd be like a 60% increase in income on what we're bringing in on current water. And that would still be I, way lower than I still think 20 is too low. Like I said, East Indiana's 30, right at their own 30, 3150. Uh, what did you say Fenton was? 2712. Yeah, I mean, we're just four up. I gotta go pay them all. <laughs> I'm just, how do we, we need to fix it, and I'm trying not to. But without all the teacher shop, who are, are the ones that were the most, or the, the ones on fixed income? Well, even if you did say whatever, it's 30, and we get there in three years, we'll say, all right, well, we're at 12, 
we need to increase go six bucks a year so we're gonna go or if we can pass like i said most places they pass an ordinance and it shows that every year it's just going to be a small increase we just, so we're done for yeah. three or four years yeah, we just need to notify the people let them know what we got while we're doing the new public so that it's yeah. not a shock to them i mean we have to yeah. well, it's not really it's not gonna... all of our costs across the border going up so this really isn't i mean yeah, we're not charging more. We're, we're just covering. Low, and then our costs are going up. Covering yeah. our costs. Oh, and right now we're doing a lot of services for <coughs> not free or negative. I mean, we're paying to do services that we're finding out, and it's getting the. It's been eye opening. Very eye opening. Well, look how much time we we spend reading meters and rereading and and gas with three trucks for three days. You know those trucks island. They still use. $50, $60 worth of gas a day, and we're charging the same thing we did forever. You know, back then when gas was $2 and minimum wage was 6 or $7. Yeah, yeah. We got to be able to pay for this stuff somehow. Yeah. We've you're almost right. done a disservice to our residents by not even. I mean, we're, I know we were trying to help them, but now it's so bad that we're, it sounds like we're the bad guy, right? Trying to hit them all at one time. Well, I think it's important to you know to frame the increase in the manner that we're using those funds not to build a Ferris wheel no. or something you know ridiculous, but what we're required to in the infrastructure to keep, to keep the, and to keep our property taxes lower too. Remember, we're still going to have our property tax is still the lowest around by far. So we are lower than anybody across the board on anything we charge. Now, when yeah. it's supposed to take that over, are we going to have new rates? We still have to adopt the tax rate. They just become the person who collects it for us. We still do the same process here. But they're still going to adopt the new rates. No, they don't. They don't set it. This council will still set our rate. Right. They just change their software to read that rate. They just they become the collection. We still have control. Yes, we still have control. <clears throat> but we could raise the utility rates, you know, a little bit at a time. Yeah. You know, we say over a three or five year period, we yeah. know we need to get to here. In year one, we know we got to increase it to here. Let's just figure out what that year is we need to go. We just need to look across the board. We got to look at utilities. We got to look at impact fees. We, you know, try to make it as, as best as possible to be able to get us where we need to. And just like Matt said, we just need to be able to be at the foundation level of being able to have everything covered. Because right now, where we're at, we're not covering. We're, we're taking out a high, you know, from processing, from the people working in our office and doing the different stuff, we're, we're taking out of high. So, we just well, need to example. It. It's going to come back down, though, too, though, once a little bit. As far as, hey, even if we have to come up on our property tax rates in the interim, once we get an additional $400 million in property value with all these new homes, it's going to come back down. And once, so those new homes bring in more commercial, which brings us more sales tax, which will look, that's our goal, right? If we can, we can get the sales tax mm -hmm. in with the commercial because we need the homes, then we can keep our property taxes low. I would love to keep our property taxes low. Let me we may have to give you a spike. Give me some more hotels, please. We're, we're going to play Monopoly, okay? I want y'all to go find me hotels. Find me some hotels. But we did say we're like talking with, with Ms. Paula on building permits. We charge $50 per inspection. Realistically, it's costing us 70 ish to do that permit to cover that cost we need to be around 70 to 75 dollars per inspection and that's just, just cover it just to cover our costs what's a permit incentive i don't have a i mean i just got on the fire department permit. sometimes a, a, a big thing like that 7-eleven mm -hmm. the fire marshal permits alone be 12 1500 dollars yeah and, and right now it costs 7500 bucks to them when people are building down here, especially commercial, they're going, holy cow, I'll pay you right now. Let's, let's, you're so low, let's just lock it in. That's what we need to cover. I mean, our building cost is 100% the cost of just us covering the inspector coming out. That's it. All the back end work that they're having to do here in the office is just a loss, 100% losses. And we have permits. Do we still have any permits that are $2? They're $5 to the simple permit. $5? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you don't get a permit, and then you know what the penalty is? You have to pay a double permit fee. Ten dollars. <laughs> so you know that's a big incentive to follow the law. So. 
We're just going to think big picture. And I think if we can. Wait, when the check I'm writing, you know, it's costing $3 a sheet. That's what I'm talking about. Not including time and effort. I just gotta, and I think we're going to, I'm hoping that we can generate, or we're not trying to generate money, but just put us to where we need to be. It gives us the money we need to cover cost of hopefully this bond or ease that a little more to us. So that way we're not having to increase our ad valorem tax so high that it hurts our residents. We're just trying to bring us more in line with where we need to be, where we should be. Even that though, you know, you look at our property tax rates, they're bottom third of the state. You know, so we're the, I think the state average is 55 and we're at 39. So we're 16 cents lower than what it is around the state. And even lowest in the area by far. Oh, by far in the area. You know, um, unless you live in Alamo Heights or Turtle Hill, but then again, their property values are in the billions. So it's going to be some growing pains, definitely. But I think those rates, yeah, if we could have that, that's meaning we do something with it. That way we incorporate it in the budget. Sorry, I mean, it's just cost of living. Cost of doing business. Okay. Anything else? Okay, um, so once again, we already said 6th of July, our next workshop. I uh, do also want to just remind you we got the 4th of July event coming up. So, you know, we got uh, a lot of folks that are putting a lot of energy into this. You know, please pass the word around. I think it's going to be a great night to be out there and be able to get together after how many years has it been, Richie? Well, we've been two years without it. Two years. Yeah, that's good. So, the park is looking amazing. Oh, James's right. guys and Wayne have trimmed up a ton of trees. Have you ever been by there or you're not coming to us? Please go by. It looks, it looks good. So I'll cut down those old mesquite trees? I don't know if they um, cut those because I know they trimmed some, but some of those old mesquite trees are going to come down. Those are on the list to come down. That even looks the same. I mean, it looks the same. We got really the new park. Yeah. It looks, it looks good. good. Mm -hmm. I should sell that wood too. You got good lumber. I mean, I know. Raise money. Hey, let's post to you. I got, got, so got, 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 got wood wholesaler. I got no. I got 19 acres of mesquite wood. I'm never gonna run out of wood. So. <laughs> hey, you tear down anything, and depending on your timing, you can always donate it for the bonfire for the school district. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of wood at the sewer plant every. Yeah. A lot of wood. Every and, and good wood. You know, I mean, good oak and. Yeah, you said it. Why? Yeah, okay. I don't think we need to do it's it. Already it's already cut up in pieces. But it's uh, 922. You know, we'll go ahead and call it a meeting. Thank you. Thank you. We'll call it a workshop. Thank you for being here. Great info. Thank you for all of our work. I'll be in the meeting. Thank you. I'll be in the meeting. We'll work on that.